Hi, I'm Shelly. I was very popular at school and the cheer captain on top of that. One day, my parents told me that my cousin was going to come stay with us. The last time we had seen each other was in childhood. I remember that she was constantly throwing temper tantrums, but Sophia had been a child back then and had probably changed since. A little spoiler, I couldn't have been more wrong. When she arrived, I tried to act friendly. My parents decided Sophia would stay in my room, and I prepared a place for her to sleep in advance. When Sophia saw the mattress, she grimaced and asked me if she could take the bed. I didn't care much, so I agreed. Then she took my things off the shelf and put her own stuff there. But her insolence did not stop there. In the morning, I went to take a shower, and when I came back, I couldn't believe my eyes. Sophia was wearing my makeup. She had used the most expensive cosmetics, too. I'd spent a very long time saving up for them. Sophia began to annoy me, but I tried to stay calm and politely asked her to put the cosmetics back in their place. It was my boyfriend Mark's birthday that day. He was throwing a pool party. I had been really looking forward to it. I'd bought a gift and baked a birthday cake in advance. I was in a great mood, and even Sophia couldn't ruin it. Or at least that's what I thought, until something happened. Sophia saw me getting ready and asked me where I was going. I told her that I was going to my boyfriend's birthday party. I wish I'd kept quiet. She asked to come with me. Of course I didn't want to take her with me. I had almost figured out how to refuse when my mom walked into our room. Of course you can go with Shelly. Have fun, girls. I groaned inwardly. I didn't want to argue with my mom, so I agreed. Sophia was delighted and immediately asked to borrow some of my things. She reached into my closet and took out a miniskirt and a top. Can I take these? I looked at her and at my clothes, confused. Did she seriously think my clothes were big enough for her? Uh, don't you think that our sizes are a little different? <laughs> Nonsense. I'll agree in this. I don't know why she even bothered asking for my permission because she didn't seem to need it. She put on the top and was jumping around the room, trying to squeeze into my skirt. She looked so ridiculous that I almost burst out laughing. The top and skirt were practically busting at the seams. We got ready. I took the gift and went to the kitchen to get the cake. I opened the refrigerator and froze with my mouth open. Someone had eaten half of it. I almost burst into tears because I had put a lot of effort into cooking it. I immediately called my mom and blew up on her. I told you not to touch the cake. It was for Mark's birthday. Mom assured me that neither she nor dad had touched it. She was definitely not lying. And I realized something. If my parents hadn't eaten it, then the only one could have done it. Well, yeah, I ate it. I got hungry at night and ate a couple of pieces. I was speechless. Sophia didn't feel guilty at all and it infuriated me. But when I started scolding her, to my surprise, mom took her side. Shelly, quit it. You can't even share a piece of cake with your cousin. She gave me money and told me to buy a cake at the store. I was in a terrible mood, but Sophia managed to make things even worse. She didn't stop talking for a second as we walked. A lot of people had come to the party. Everyone was telling Mark how lucky he was to be dating me. We were having fun and everything was going great, but Sophia kept being annoying. She wouldn't leave me alone and wanted to be the center of attention. At some point, everyone started diving into the pool. I used to be on the swimming team and my friends asked me to show them a cool trick. I stood on the springboard, jumped, twisted in the air and landed beautifully. Everyone whistled and applauded loudly. Then Sophia suddenly declared that she could do the same thing. Before we knew it, she was diving into the pool. It was truly something. Everyone who was standing nearby was doused with water. The girl screamed loudly. The water hit the barbecue and the steaks that were being cooked, and the fire went out. I felt terribly embarrassed, while Sophia seemed absolutely fine. She came out of the pool and looked around, seeming satisfied. I told you. Did you see how cool I was? Everyone was sick and tired of her antics, and Mark got an idea. He asked his friend Ethan to talk to Sophia and distract her. At first, Ethan refused, but Mark managed to convince him. The funniest thing was that Ethan succeeded. Sophia started bothering him, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. At the end of the evening, Mark asked me to come with him to the yard. We sat on the swings. We were hidden by the bushes, so no one could see us. We were finally alone. Mark leaned toward me and was about to kiss me. Oh, there you are. Damn, I had it up to here with her. Sophia had seen us leave and followed us. She had even dragged poor Ethan along with her. I was about to shout at her when Mark smoothed things over. He said it was getting late and it was time to end the party. He called me in the morning the next day and suggested something interesting. A basketball court had been built in this area. People often came there to play. Mark suggested I join his team. Sophia was still asleep and I tried to pack quietly. I wanted to sneak out of the house unnoticed, but it didn't work out. Sophia woke up and, of course, followed me. The game was going great as usual. 
A lot of people came to watch. My unbearable cousin kept getting in the way. She clumsily jumped on the other players and pushed them to get the ball. Mark was the captain of our team and eventually snapped. He asked Ethan to distract Sophia again so that everyone else could have a nice time. Ethan kept refusing, but in the end, he felt sorry for the players and distracted Sophia with the conversation. After she left the court, playing became much easier. Our team soon took the lead. I sat on Mark's shoulders and scored the decisive goal. We were celebrating the victory when suddenly noticed that Sophia was whining at Ethan. I want to do that too. She made him sit down and got on his shoulders. We tried to stop her, but it was too late. Ethan tried to get up, lost his balance, and they fell. Ethan immediately grimaced and groaned. His neck hurt. So Mark and I brought him to the doctor. Sophia came with us. Just imagine. She didn't feel guilty. On the contrary, she said that Ethan should work out more since he couldn't even lift a girl. I couldn't help but say, this is all your fault. It's not that Ethan needs to work out, you just need to lose weight. Sophia snorted, hurt, turned away and didn't say anything else. Luckily, Ethan had just sprained his neck a little. I came home feeling angry at Sophia. I came up to my mom and asked her quietly when Sophia would leave. I was hoping that my cousin would be staying with us for a short time, but I was in for some unpleasant news. Just imagine, Sophia was going to live with us for a whole month, and my parents had also talked to my principal so that she could go to the same school as me. What a nightmare. I couldn't stand it. Please try to make friends with her. She got in some serious trouble, so her parents sent her here for a while. Sophia was usually the source of the trouble, but trying to prove it to my mother was useless. At school, my worst fears came true. My cousin followed me everywhere and demanded that I show her everything. She even sat next to me in the cafeteria. Within five minutes, all my friends hated her. She was picking on everyone, criticizing them, and constantly putting her foot in her mouth. When Sophia finished eating and went to get a second serving, my friends asked me to get rid of her. I would love to, but I don't know how. A classmate of mine was walking by her table. I immediately got an idea. I grabbed her by the arm and sat her down on Sophia's chair. When my cousin came back, there was nowhere for her to sit. We hoped she would move, but that didn't happen. She took a chair from the next table, pulled it up to ours, and sat between Mark and me. I was grinding my teeth with anger. Everyone was annoyed, but Sophia didn't seem to notice it. However, at the end of the day, someone finally put her in her place. The cheerleading team had an important performance coming up, so we were busy preparing for it. After classes, our team came to the gym. The girls and I talked and decided that we needed new costumes. Mine was supposed to stand out, and I was planning on ordering a custom costume. When we started practicing, Sophia came into the gym. She tried to repeat after us, but only got in the way again. She messed up our performance and even tried to lecture us. In the end, my friends couldn't stand it. You can't be in the gym while we're practicing. That's right, get lost. For the first time, Sophia didn't know what to say. She left, and we calmly finished practicing. When I got home, Sophia pounced on me. Everyone hates me because I'm fat. I tried to explain to her that her figure had nothing to do with it. She was just being too brazen. But Sophia didn't want to hear it, and spent the whole evening pointedly watching the TV. When my mom came home from work, I asked her for money for the new costume, but I was in for an unpleasant surprise. Recently, my parents had paid off a loan, and they barely had enough money to last us for the rest of the month. We don't have any extra money, and Sophia's visiting us as well. Her family is also struggling financially now, and they didn't give her any pocket money. That really upset me. How was I supposed to sew a costume now? The next day, I complained to Mark, and he offered to lend me money. I couldn't accept that and refused. Then he came up with another idea. There was a place in our city where singers and dancers performed in the evenings. You're a great dancer. You could try to earn extra money by performing. It was a good idea. And after classes, Mark, Ethan, and I went there. Have you guessed who tagged along yet? Right, it was Sophia again. She was very persistent. When I started dancing, she stood next to me and tried to repeat after me. It was distracting and I couldn't focus. Then she asked Ethan to dance with her. He suddenly snapped and told her everything he thought of her. Sophia turned red and snapped back. She stayed with us for a while longer, then turned around and left. Finally. After she left, things started working out, and I earned some money. The success inspired me, and I came there to perform several more times. As a result, I earned a decent amount of money. I added my pocket money to it and ordered the costume. A couple of days later, I picked it up at the tailor shop and went home satisfied. The costume turned out to be very beautiful. I was really looking forward to performing in it. When I got home, I immediately realized that something had happened. My mom looked frustrated. She said that the money she and dad had been saving up was gone. That was when she noticed the costume in my hands and frowned. Shelly, did you take the money to buy a costume? I was so indignant. How could my mom suspect me of something like that? I said that I earned the money for the costume myself, but she didn't believe me. Then, dad broke in and we had a fight. At some point, Sophia returned home. She heard that my parents were fighting and immediately tried to calm my parents down. 
Shelly, how could you do that? That was the last straw for me, and the fight turned into a real scandal. As a result, my parents took away my pocket money for several months. It was terribly unfair, and I burst into tears. Our team was supposed to perform the next day. I had been looking forward to it for a really long time, but now I wasn't enthusiastic at all. I felt awful, but tried to perform well for the sake of my friends. We nailed it. At the end, I performed a difficult trick, and the audience was delighted. Then Sophia ran out on stage. Would she ever calm down? I noticed that she was wearing new clothes that looked a lot like my costume. When had she bought it? I watched you practice and learned how to do it as well. Let me show you. Sophia wanted to repeat my trick. I shouted that it could be dangerous without proper practice, but she just waved me off. She jumped up, tried to do a somersault, and fell. It was expected, so I wasn't even surprised. I wanted to laugh, but Sophia suddenly started screaming that her leg hurt. We called a doctor. It turned out that she had managed to land so badly that she got a fracture. Sophia was brought to a hospital, and I went with her. Soon, my terrified parents joined in. While Sophia was being put in a cast, I was holding her things. At some point, her phone started ringing. It was a call from a fitness club. I answered, and you wouldn't believe what I found out. It turned out that my cousin had bought a subscription to a weight loss program. I immediately began to wonder where she got the money for it as well as the new clothes. I turned on the speaker phone and my parents heard our conversation. Mom and Dad exchanged glances. After Sophia was discharged, my parents asked her directly if she had taken our money. Naturally, Sophia denied everything, and then she clutched at her leg and pretended to be in a lot of pain. After a while, her parents arrived. They had decided to take Sophia home because of her fracture. I was over the moon, but then I accidentally overheard a conversation between my mother and my aunt. My aunt started crying and confessed something. It turned out that it hadn't been the first time Sophia had stolen something. She often took things from her classmates or neighbors without asking. She had recently gotten into big trouble because of it, and that was why Sophia's parents had sent her to another city. After that talk, Mom apologized to me for her accusations. Shelly, I'm sorry. Your father and I were wrong. You're a very smart girl. The best daughter in the world. We made up. Ethan and Mark came over in the evening. Sophia and her parents were just about to leave. We rejoiced and saw them off together. Finally, I told Sophia it wasn't her looks that she should change. Everybody hates you for your personality, not your looks. Sophia snapped at me and said that she was amazing. Yeah, it seems like some people are lost causes, and my cousin is one of them. Hi, I'm Margot, and I had a pretty terrible childhood. Mom and Dad didn't really care where I was spending my time or even what I was doing. They fed and clothed me pretty terribly, and my classmates constantly bullied me. It was no shock that I grew up to be a reserved teenager. The only thing that made me happy was singing. I tried to convince my parents to get me a vocal coach, but they just said, We don't have the money for that kind of nonsense. But they always had enough for all sorts of parties. Of course, I was really hurt. I wasn't going to give up on my hobby. I always sang at home, which infuriated my parents. Usually, they just turned on the TV really loudly to try and drown out my voice. But one day, they went too far. I had been in a great mood that night. After all, I was supposed to compete in a music contest on stage for the first time that next day. I had been practicing a Rihanna song in my room when my dad burst in looking really annoyed. When will you finally shut up? We have guests. They're all annoyed by those awful wails. I promised I would sing quieter, but my parents still weren't satisfied with that. And in the end, my mom grabbed me and threw me outside. Just sing your stupid songs here. When you get cold, knock. We'll let you back in. I ended up standing outside in my pajamas. It was snowing and an icy wind was blowing, so in just a few minutes, my teeth were chattering. But I wasn't gonna give up, so I sang for almost an hour until I finally lost my voice. And then I knocked on the door. My hand was shaking so bad from the cold. And for some reason, no one opened. I started banging on the door with all of my strength. And when that didn't help either, I jumped up and tried to look in the window. My parents were asleep on the couch, and their guests had passed out right at the table. Everyone had just forgotten I was there. I couldn't feel my legs anymore, and they turned blue all over from the cold. So, out of desperation, I dug out a big stone from the snow, and I started to swing it to break the window and climb inside. But all of a sudden, a neighbor called me over to the fence. Margo, what are you doing? I ended up telling her the whole truth, and that kind woman let me stay the night. She even gave me hot tea and wrapped me up in warm blankets and put me to bed. When you wake up, I'll take you to your parents. I fell asleep, feeling happy. 
However, in the morning, I saw a man instead of my parents. He brought me to an orphanage, and I was so scared I couldn't focus on what was going on around me. I don't know how much time I spent there before I was finally sent to a foster family living in another state. The Bakers turned out to be good people. Mrs. Baker was a vocal coach, and seeing my talent, she helped me train my voice and even taught me how to play the piano. I immediately liked her son Jacob, and at first, we were just friends. But by the time we'd grown up, we'd become a couple. And long story short, my life was really great. But I did really miss my parents, no matter how badly they had treated me. I was sure that this whole time they had probably been looking for me, and they probably really regretted what they'd done. So as soon as I came of age, Jacob and I packed our clothes, came to my hometown, and rented an apartment. Jacob got a job, and I decided to do what I'd come back for at once. I went to my parents' house. My heart was pounding when I saw the familiar front yard. Almost nothing had changed despite the years that had passed. However, I wondered, who was that girl? As I got closer, I saw that she looked a lot like me. My parents had probably given up on finding me and had just had another child. And that's when I met my sister. Rita turned out to be a very friendly girl. She told me that she loved to dance, but her mean parents wouldn't let her practice and constantly turned off her music. I was upset. What had happened to me hadn't taught them anything. I was listening to Rita and trying not to cry when I heard a familiar voice behind me. Rita, how many times have I told you not to talk to strangers? With a smile, I turned around and I spread my arms open to hug my mom. But she just frowned. Oh, it's you. Well, come in if you want. That was not how I'd imagined our meeting would go. I followed my mom into the house, but she folded her hands in front of her and without even offering me anything to drink, asked, Look, why are you here? Do you need money? Here, take it. Mom took a thin wad of money out of the closet and threw it at me. Just don't come here again, please. The child services won't leave us alone because of you. They're constantly coming to see how Rita is. And please, don't tell her that you're her sister. There's really no need to upset her. I threw the money on the table and stormed out of the house. I could barely hold back my tears and everything around me was blurry. But somehow, I managed to get back home but I still burst into tears. I was hysterical, breaking all the dishes and collapsing onto the bed with no strength left in my body. Jacob only barely managed to calm me down. And from that day on, life lost its colors for me. I stopped smiling, stopped taking care of myself, stopped cleaning the house. The apartment just didn't feel like home anymore. At first, Jacob tried to support me through my depression, but then he got tired of my sour face. He started to stay late at work more and more often. And one day, I found out why. That day, I was shopping at the supermarket and I saw Jacob. He was holding some girl's hand and choosing drinks. I didn't make a scene. I had no tears or emotions left for that. I just went home, sat down at the piano and started singing. The notes and the words came to me all by themselves. And that's how I composed my very first song. It turned out sad, but so beautiful. I closed the piano lid, packed my things, and I put the engagement ring on the dining room table. But then I bumped into Jacob at the door. He understood immediately what was going on without me even having to say anything. I'm sorry, Margo. Please stay here. I know you have nowhere to go and the apartment is paid for until the end of the month. Jacob left by himself and I was all alone. I had to find a job to keep living somehow. So I opened my laptop and started looking through the vacancies. But then someone rang the doorbell. Did you forget something? But it wasn't Jacob standing there. Miss Evans, I finally found you. My guest introduced himself as Peter White, an employee of a law firm. He handed me his business card and a folder. Inside were some documents and a key to a safe deposit box. I'm sorry, there's probably some kind of mistake here. Not at all. You probably don't remember your grandfather. You were very young at the time. Mr. Evans was very rich, but also terminally ill. He saw the kind of lifestyle your parents led and made you, his granddaughter, the sole heiress to his fortune. You can only get it now that you're an adult. This all seemed like some kind of joke to me. I spent the evening trying to digest this news, and in the morning, I went to the bank to check everything. I was led to my safety deposit box. I took the key opened it, and I shouted for joy. There was a ton of money inside. In just one day, I'd gone from struggling as a beggar, abandoned by everyone, to being a rich woman. And that, of course, called for a celebration. I had lunch at the most expensive restaurant in the city. 
shopped in luxurious boutiques and visited an amazing spa. At night, I went to an elite nightclub. I only made my way back home in the morning, tired but blissfully happy. I was about to go to bed when I got a message. I almost dropped my phone in surprise. It was Rita. She had suggested that we meet. I sent a taxi for my sister, and in a couple of hours, I met her at my house. She hugged me and said through her tears, I heard your talk with mom, and I know that you're my sister. I have no one else to talk to. Living with them is awful. They pretend to be caring parents, but that's only when child services come to visit. They don't actually care about me. I understood Rita like no one else, and I promised that I would make sure things were better for her. And we chatted for several hours. Rita turned out to be such a kind and cheerful girl. I decided I would share a secret with her, and I sang the song that I'd composed after Jacob's betrayal. Rita filmed my performance on video, and when I finished, she suggested that we post it on TikTok. That was so cool, sis! You could totally become popular! But I was pretty afraid of getting hate comments. I had had enough negativity in my life already, so Rita couldn't manage to convince me. In the evening, I walked her home and I went to bed. And in the morning, I woke up to the sound of countless notifications. Rita had sent me a ton of joyful emoticons and stickers, and when I opened the link she'd sent me, I jumped straight out of my bed. That little trickster had posted my song after all, and it got two million views? From that day on, a new life began for me. I started writing songs, filming TikToks, and getting thousands of likes. My audience grew at a furious pace. I invested my grandfather's money into improving my skills, recording songs in professional studios, filming awesome music videos, and taking even more vocal lessons. And only a year later, I had become a real star. I collabed with famous musicians and appeared on the most popular shows. Even top bloggers reposted my performances. As you've probably guessed, I became ridiculously rich. The first thing I did was send part of it to my foster family for all the good they had done for me. And Peter and I started dating again, and even got married after a while. We bought a luxurious mansion in Beverly Hills. Rita started visiting us every weekend, and I was happy. But then something ruined my mood. That day, I returned from a tour, and I saw my parents near my house. Margot, dear, forgive us. We've realized how wrong we were to you. Mom started crying and reaching out to me, looking pitiful. But a cheap trick like that wouldn't work on me. I knew perfectly well they only wanted money from me. So I asked my security guards to show the uninvited guests out. However, getting rid of them wasn't that easy. My parents started following me and appearing everywhere I went. At home, at concerts, near my studio. I just had to start pretending I couldn't see them. But one day, I got a strange call from child services. Miss Evans, your parents were in a car accident. Come take Rita or she'll be sent to an orphanage. I'd never been so scared. I arranged for Rita to be brought to me immediately. And a couple of hours later, I was already hugging her. Yes, my sister was safe, but I still felt so uneasy. I felt bad for my parents, even after everything they had done. And I wanted to give them a third chance. So I used my connections to find out which hospital they were at, and I rushed over there. When I walked into their ward, I screamed and I dropped my oranges. Mom and Dad were sitting in wheelchairs, all bandaged up. Tears ran down my face. I knelt down and I hugged my parents, even though we had never been close before. I decided I would do everything so that Mom and Dad could get back on their feet as soon as possible. I paid the doctor, and my parents were transferred into the best ward. They started to give my parents the most expensive medicines. My parents' phones had also broken in the accident, so I gave them brand new iPhones so they would always be in touch with me. And most importantly, I bought them a house in Beverly Hills next door to ours, so I could always take care of them with no issues. After they were discharged, my parents moved, and we began spending time together, just like a normal family would. At Christmas, I decided I would surprise them. I put vouchers for a trip to the Maldives for wheelchair users in a sock and I snuck into their house to hang up the gift on the Christmas tree. But then I suddenly heard someone open the door. I hung up the sock and I hid in the closet to see my parents' reaction. However, something terrible happened. Mom and dad suddenly jumped out of their wheelchairs, took off their bandages, and opened a cocktail bottle. Dad raised his glass and said in a solemn voice, To our doctor, Mr. Scott, who confirmed our beautiful story to that absolute fool. My world collapsed again, but 
I wasn't gonna cry. I refused to feel sorry for myself anymore. I jumped out of the closet and I told my parents everything I really thought about them just then. And after I kicked them out of the house, they took Rita away from me. Not because they loved her, but just because they wanted to spite me. My sister was crying and begging me not to leave her, but the law was on the side of our parents. Ever since that day, Peter and I had only been thinking about how to get Rita back. But even with my connections and his legal talent, nothing worked out. We were getting really desperate when I suddenly got another call from child services. Miss Evans, your parents were in a car accident again and are badly injured. They're in hospital right now. Please come and take your sister. I was all too happy to bring Rita home. Of course, I didn't believe a word they said about my parents. They were so lazy, they hadn't even come up with a new scheme to get money. It just... It made me so mad. I decided maybe I would finally punish them for their blatant lies. I took the police with me to the hospital to expose those liars and I burst into the ward. But I didn't see what I'd been expecting to see. Mom was lying on the bed, crippled and helpless. All she could do was blink. I wasn't even sure she actually recognized me. In a trembling voice, I asked the doctor where dad was but he just lowered his eyes to the floor and put his hand on my shoulder. My condolences, miss. Your father died in intensive care. Hi, I'm Angela. Ever since I can remember, I always had troubles with my family. My parents adored my younger brother, Simon, and gave him cool gifts even when there was no occasion. Meanwhile, I only got useless garbage, even for holidays. But on my last birthday, a miracle happened. My parents actually bothered to prepare a party and promised me a cool surprise. I put on my best dress and went down to the living room to be congratulated. When my parents handed me a pink box, I screamed with joy. For the whole month, I had been trying to get them to buy me fabric with unicorns so I could finally sew myself a hoodie. And so, I had finally been heard. However, what I took out of the box was not a cloth, but a set of colored pencils. That was the last straw. I threw the pencils away and I slammed my fists on the table. I am sick of this! Why do you hate me so much? You spend all of your money on Simon and you always get me something dumb as a gift. Calm down. The guests are coming. What will they think of you acting like this? There it is again. You worry about everyone but me. I don't want to see you anymore. I ran to my room and slammed the door shut loudly. I was crying so hard I could barely breathe. To drown out my sobs, my parents turned on music. Everyone was having fun at my party without me. But soon, my brother remembered I existed. He handed me his console. Happy birthday, Angie. This is for you from me. Don't cry. Simon had got that console from our parents for his last birthday. I mentally compared it to my box of pencils and I burst into tears again. Why did he get everything and I got nothing? I was tormented by that question all night. And in the morning, I decided I would have a serious talk with my parents. When I knocked on their bedroom door, I heard my mother crying. She was sitting on the bed and clutching a notebook sheet in her hands, and it was wet with tears. I recognized my dad's handwriting. Mom, what's happened? Where's dad? I definitely didn't expect her reaction. Mom jumped to her feet, wiped her tears, and grumbled. He left because of you. He got tired of living with such an ungrateful drama queen. I was shocked, but I didn't feel guilty. Dad could not have left us because of one little scandal. Mom was obviously hiding something. I tried to find out what was in the note, but she withdrew into herself. She cried for days and didn't notice either me or Simon. Soon, we ran out of food, and I asked my mom for some money. We don't have any. I haven't found a job yet. You should find one for yourself. The internet is full of vacancies for teenagers. After all, everything that's happened is your fault. I cried all night, clutching my favorite SpongeBob plushie in my arms. And in the morning, looking into our empty refrigerator, I decided I would do just as she said and find a part-time job. That's how my new life began. Before school, I delivered newspapers. And in the evening, I walked the neighborhood dogs for a small fee. Every day, I walked over 20 kilometers on foot. But I couldn't even rest at night. My mother began to bring over her new friends. They partied until morning and never let us sleep. I gave up my entire salary to my mother but she was clearly in no hurry to find a job. So we were constantly running short of money. Two months flew by that way. During that time, mom recovered from her depression. She got a job as a maid in an expensive hotel, learned to smile again, and stopped being mad at me. One morning, mom came down to breakfast particularly happy and invited Simon and I for a walk. We were so happy, but as it turns out, we shouldn't have been. 
Mom took us to some strange house and asked for us to wait for her for a minute. Through the window, I saw her run out into the street, get into a posh car with some man, and drive away. At that moment, I realized that Mom wouldn't be coming back. The woman who came up to us next confirmed that. Angela, Simon, welcome to the orphanage. It was terrible there. I missed sewing and my cozy room. When I told Simon about it, he took my things out of his backpack. Some makeup, a private diary, and my SpongeBob. Why did you take all this with you? I heard Mom talking on the phone before we left, and I understood what was happening. That's why I packed your things. So that you... So you knew? And you didn't tell me? I would have come up with something. I would have convinced Mom, or got another job, or found Dad somehow. It's your fault we ended up here. I took out all my anger on Simon. I even scolded him for being idle. After all, while I'd been torn between school and jobs, my brother had been eating sweets and playing video games. Simon was upset, but he didn't say anything. We didn't really talk much after that. But I didn't stay in the orphanage for long. Two weeks later, a married couple came in. When Mr. and Mrs. Bell saw me, they were absolutely delighted. Soon enough, they took me to their place. My new life turned out to be incredibly cool. My new parents doted on me. They bought me a bunch of expensive clothes and fulfilled all my wishes. Finally, I could design and sew. They got me so many fabrics, I could have opened a sewing shop. Long story short, my new parents tried very hard to make me happy, and I loved the attention. My brother and I had switched places. Now, I was a loved child, and he, I didn't even know how he was doing. However, I soon got tired of gloating. My parents' care started to get to me. Even the mountain of gifts no longer made me happy. Mr. and Mrs. Bell tried to control my every step and annoyed me with their questions. I began to miss the time in the orphanage when no one cared about me. I took apart the box I had brought with me a month ago. SpongeBob immediately reminded me of Simon. Just imagine, my brother had taken my toy instead of throwing his things into the backpack, just so I would be happy. Why didn't I appreciate that earlier? I felt so ashamed of myself. I convinced my parents to visit Simon at the orphanage, and I brought him a big box of nice little things. Sweets, toys, and clothes. Simon was much happier to see me than the gifts. He wasn't even angry about what I had said to him not long before leaving. We hugged after the long separation, and we chatted for hours. I promised that I would definitely come back, but the next visit was not as joyful. My brother had a black eye, and he was wearing a cardboard crown on his head. From my time there, I knew that it was usually worn by kids who were being bullied. It's because of your gifts. The other kids didn't like that I had good things. They called me a beggar prince and took everything away. I was so scared for my brother. Who knew what else those little hooligans were capable of? At home, I plucked up the courage and I asked my parents to take Simon away from the orphanage, but they refused. We didn't count on a second child, Angie. I'm sorry, but the boy will have to stay there. Since then, my life turned into torture. I felt so guilty for living well while my younger brother was suffering. I did everything I could to try and convince my parents, but nothing worked. In the end, I felt devastated. Only sewing could help me. I locked myself in my room and spent all day working on my designs and sewing. One evening, I was interrupted by a knock on my window. I pulled the curtains apart and I saw some guy. I opened the window to try and talk to him, but he had the nerve to climb into my room without getting invited and tried to hug me. Anna, I am so happy to see you. It's been so many years. Where have you been all this time? Um, I think you have me confused with someone else. I'm Angela and I haven't lived here very long. The guy looked at me incredulously and got out into the street again. Soon, he came back with a picture and handed it to me. I saw two children in it. The boy, who looked very similar to my new acquaintance, and the girl was just like me, but not only in looks. Judging by her outfit, she was also fond of designing clothes. She was posing in a dress made of leaves, cones, and grasses. Huh, we do look alike, but dude, that's still not me. Well then, let's get to know each other. I'm Archie. I came here to visit my grandmother for the summer. Let's hang out in the yard this evening. I agreed, and I asked Archie for the picture so I could show it to my parents. When they saw the girl, they grew sad. Mom looked down and said, Anna was our daughter, but she's gone now. That's why we decided to adopt you. You look just like her. I was touched by their story, and I hugged my parents. In the evening, as promised, 
I met Archie in the garden. The guy asked me to make him a cool costume from improvised materials like his friend had when they were kids. So I started picking flowers for the costume, and I got so carried away that I didn't even notice an old lady come up to us. She looked at me for a long time, and then she suddenly hugged me. Anna, sweetie, I missed you so much. Not again. I had to tell her everything I had just learned from my parents. What kind of stupid joke is this? My granddaughter is alive. She was just sent to an orphanage. I didn't have time to recover from that when mom appeared on the porch and shouted, Angela, go home now. Don't you dare talk to that woman. At home, mom said that that was a local mad woman who called everyone her grandchildren and that I should stay away from her. But I didn't think so. There were way too many strange coincidences. Mr. and Mrs. Bell were hiding something from me. When they left for work the next day, I decided I would find out what it was. I searched the whole house for clues. In a couple of hours, I was able to find a box. There were documents and a USB flash drive inside. The first thing I did was put it into my laptop, and I found a video. Anna was playing with a plush SpongeBob. It looked just like mine. Goosebumps ran down my back. In the box, I also found something else, the results of a DNA test. It confirmed my suspicions that I was Mr. and Mrs. Bell's daughter. I was the Anna who had been sent to an orphanage many, many years ago. They had just changed my name for some reason. Tears ran down my face. I had been abandoned twice already, first by my real parents and then by my foster ones. Now I realized why they had treated me worse than Simon. After all, he was their son by blood. I was just someone else's baby. I hated them all and I decided I would run away to be with my brother. Maybe he wasn't my brother by blood, but he was the only one who really loved me. Living in an orphanage seemed like a better idea than staying under the same roof with a bunch of traitors. I packed my things and I left the house in tears. That old lady from before followed me. She begged me to listen to her. Don't you wanna know what was in your foster father's note? I froze. How did she know about the note? To be honest, what happened with my foster parents was still a mystery to me. I decided that this was my only chance to find out the truth. So I agreed, and I listened to the interesting story that old lady Ms. Weisberg had to tell me. Your parents are Luke and Veronica. They had you when they were students. They were always short on money then. Both wanted to be free and build a career, not babysit a child. Then, your parents were suddenly offered a very prestigious job and decided to send you to an orphanage. When I found out about it, I had a heart attack. They kept me in hospital for a whole month. As soon as I was discharged, I started applying for your guardianship. But it was too late. You had been adopted by a young couple that had no kids of their own. I managed to find their address, though. I would come to your house and watch you grow up. You looked happy, but when the second child appeared in the family, everything changed. You often cried on the swings in the front yard, and no one ever came to calm you down. I realized you weren't happy in that house, and I decided I would try to get your foster parents to give you to me so I could raise you. They quickly agreed. Your dad put on an act with that note like we'd agreed and left the family. But then, things did not go according to plan. Your foster mother handed you and her own son over to the orphanage. It's a good thing that your real parents came to their senses. I'm glad that you found a family, and I want to be a part of it. But I haven't talked to Luke or Veronica in years. I think I've had enough. I'm tired of other people's fights. All everyone did was move me from family to family. I don't want to go back to any of them. I took the bus to the orphanage. I lied and I said that my parents had beat me, hurt and generally hated me so that they wouldn't send me back. The teacher was shocked and immediately let me in. When I found Simon, I told him everything that I had learned from my grandmother. He wasn't very upset though. During this time, I've already grown used to being abandoned. You're my real family. We hugged and promised each other we wouldn't be separated anymore. If a family wanted to take us, we would only go together and we didn't have to wait long. That same evening, my parents came. At first, I refused to go out to them, but they looked so miserable, I just had to agree. You don't have to say anything. Grandma already told me the truth. I told you not to talk to her. Angie, baby, stop causing a scene. Let's go home and apologize to the teacher for lying. I agreed I would go back, but only on one condition. If my parents adopted Simon and made up with my grandmother, I was tired of fighting all my life and I wanted to have a normal family. My parents knew exactly how stubborn I was and they quickly agreed. 
The paperwork took several months to get sorted out. During that time, I decided I would stay with my brother so he wouldn't get lonely. The whole family visited us every day. Soon, those meetings made everyone get along. Even mom and grandma stopped fighting. When we came back to the house, I felt happy for the first time in a long time. We started everything from scratch, with no resentment or reproach. Things were finally looking up. But one day, Simon's parents appeared on our doorstep. With tears in their eyes, they asked us to listen to them. Hi, my name is Zoe. I'm a cheerleader. We recently performed at a football competition to support our school team. We were even on TV. When I came back home, the first thing I saw were my terrified parents. My mom's older sister had called. She was strict and unbearable and had worked as a teacher her whole life. My mom had always been afraid of her. We lived in different cities, but now my aunt was going to come and stay with us for a while. I was terrified. I still remembered our rare meetings from when I was a kid. It had been the stuff of real nightmares. My parents and I decided that I would pretend to be an obedient girl in front of her to avoid conflicts. I dressed simply and cleaned the house, but my aunt still found something to be displeased with. Why are there stains on the dishes? And on the mirror? Zoe, why would you choose such a terrible nail polish? I was grinding my teeth with anger and barely held back from saying something rude to her. The next day, I had a sore throat, got a fever, and didn't go to school. Of course, my aunt immediately started to tell me what I should do to get better. Her fruit drinks and bitter teas just made me sick. Luckily, she was only at home in the mornings and evenings and disappeared somewhere else during the day. One day, I got a call from Julia, my best friend and the captain of the cheerleading team. She told me our school had a new principal who was absolutely awful. She set up stupid rules and constantly yelled at everyone. What a bummer. Like I didn't get enough of that from my aunt. One day, my boyfriend Frank came over. We were hanging out in my room when my aunt suddenly came home. First, I heard her voice downstairs and then footsteps coming toward my room. Damn it. If she saw me with a guy, I would be done for. Frank had to quickly get out through the window and climb down a nearby tree. After a couple of days, I got better and went back to school. Before the first lesson, the new principal came into our classroom, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I almost fell off my chair in surprise. The new principal turned out to be my aunt. She announced that from that day on, everyone at school would have to wear a uniform. Then she gave us sets of clothes and all the girls grimaced. The uniform was terribly <sighs> ugly. The boys agreed that it sucked. During a break, everyone started discussing the new rules. It turned out that the principal hadn't just introduced a new uniform. Just imagine, she had disbanded the cheerleading club. All the girls were furious, especially Julia. She suggested we wear mini skirts to school as a protest. All the cheerleaders supported her, but I had to keep silent. I didn't know what to do. On the one hand, I was pretending to be a good girl in front of my aunt so as not to create trouble for my parents. But on the other hand, I didn't want to argue with my friends. So far, no one had guessed that the new principal was my relative. But if they found out about it, I would be in a world of trouble. The next day, I put on a uniform. Of course, my friends immediately pounced on me. They were very angry because I hadn't stood by them. We were talking in the hallway when the principal suddenly came up to us. Why aren't you wearing your uniforms? The girls immediately said they refused to wear them. So the principal yelled at them and told them to clean the classrooms every day after school as punishment. The new principal made everyone in school hate her in just a week. As soon as someone broke the rules, she immediately appeared nearby. It was like she had a nose for rule breakers. The cheerleaders, led by Julia, began to come up with a plan to get rid of her. They were angry with me because of the uniform, but still hung out with me and Frank. Everyone decided that since the principal was so prim, we had to drive her crazy by breaking the rules so that she would be unable to stand it and leave. One evening, a couple of my classmates snuck into school. They drew graffiti on the walls next to the principal's office and hung a poster with her Photoshop portrait on its door. When the principal saw it in the morning, she was livid. She found the artists and made them scrub everything off. Hmm, how had she found out who they were so quickly? Soon, Julia got a new idea. She secretly filmed the principal on camera, made a funny edit of the video, added trending music, and posted it on TikTok. The video quickly went viral, and the principal became a meme. Our computer genius added the video to the school website and made it impossible to remove. You should have seen how furious my aunt was and how much we laughed at her. However, she quickly found out who was at fault again. She threatened the genius with serious problems, and he had to remove the video from the website. We wondered again, 
how did she manage to find the rule breakers so quickly? Despite everything, Julia decided we couldn't give up on cheerleading. Every day when the principal left school after classes, we trained in the gym. I often missed practice so that my aunt wouldn't find out anything. Because of that, my relationship with my friends became even worse. That worried me, but I didn't know how to fix it. Frank often worked out in the gym with the cheerleaders and helped nerdy Charlie as well. One day, the cheerleaders came up with a new idea. Julia recorded the sound of the school bell on her phone and hid a Bluetooth speaker in the hallway. She turned it on right in the middle of classes to disrupt them. The school was a mess. The principal was freaking out and couldn't figure out what was going on. However, by the end of the day, she found the speaker and punished the girls again. I was in for an unpleasant surprise at home too. My aunt talked to my parents and told them that my classmates and I were completely out of control. You have to focus on raising Zoe. She has to be grounded. I saw that my dad was very annoyed with my aunt. He held back for the sake of my mom, who didn't want to argue with her sister. As a result, my parents scolded me, but only for show. Of course, I wasn't really grounded. It seemed like my dad would have been happy to join us in our quest to drive my aunt insane. One day, the principal announced that a committee would come to our school in a few days. Don't even think about pulling anything. You have to wear your uniforms and show proper manners to make a good impression. Naturally, we were going to do the opposite. To lure the principal into a false sense of security, the cheerleaders wore their uniforms for the next few days. The classrooms and hallways were clean since everyone was getting punished all the time. The principal was satisfied. She thought we had given up. How naive of her. In the evening before the arrival of the committee, I stole the key to the principal's office from my aunt. The girls and I snuck into the school and made a mess there. We smashed the flower pots, spread dirt over the floor, and scattered garbage everywhere. Then we got into the principal's office and put all the papers in the wrong places. The next day, everyone came to school dressed like they were at a rock concert. The girls wore bright makeup, and the boys had put on torn jeans and t-shirts with skulls. When the committee walked into the school, we turned on heavy metal on the speakers. The committee was shocked. The principal opened her mouth, choked with indignation, and did not even know what to say. That was exactly the reaction we were hoping for. The members of the committee told our principal that they wanted to speak with her in private and left our office looking very displeased. Hooray! We did it! Overjoyed, the cheerleaders performed their routine right in the hallway. I was glad too. Maybe if my aunt was fired, she would finally move out? After school, Frank invited me for a walk. We hung out in the cafe, then came to the park. We were sitting on a bench and kissing. All of a sudden, we heard my aunt's annoyed voice right next to us. Zoe, what are you doing? Damn it, I couldn't believe I was so unlucky. My aunt was very angry after the day she'd had. She threw a fit and yelled at Frank. Then she grabbed my arm and started pulling me along. You have no right to do this to me. You're not my mom and I'm already an adult. You're still going to school, which means you're a child. Your mom needs me to knock some sense into her as well, since she's letting you date whoever you want. At home, she brought mom to tears. Luckily, dad was at work, or the day would have ended much worse. The next day, there was a rumor at school that the principal was going to be fired. Nobody saw her in the hallways. She did not come to lessons, and everyone rejoiced. After school, I came to the cheerleaders' practice. Charlie didn't show up that day, and Frank was working out by himself. Everything was going well. The girls had almost forgiven me and we were talking like we used to. However, in the middle of practice, the principal suddenly walked into the gym. She wasn't surprised when she saw us at all. She had definitely known we would be there. Someone had ratted us out, but her arrival didn't scare Julia. Well, what are you going to do to us? You will be fired soon. The principal smirked. Who told you such nonsense? The members of the committee were horrified by what was going on at the school. They decided that only a principal like me could handle it. We were stunned by such news. So we had been wrong? We hadn't succeeded and she would be staying? The principal suddenly looked right at me and did the thing I was most afraid of. Zoe, your behavior is simply unacceptable. Yesterday you were kissing a guy and today you're jumping in a miniskirt with pom-poms. My niece shouldn't act like this. There was silence in the gym. Everyone was looking at me and I felt terrible. I wanted to sink through the floor. After the principal left, the girls crowded around me and accused me of lying to them. Traitor, you must have been the one to rat us out to your aunt. That's how she always found the rule breakers. It wasn't like that. Yes, she's my aunt, but I want her to leave as much as you do. No one believed me except Frank. My friends boycotted me, and my boyfriend was the only one who supported me. He had guessed everything in the park when the principal had led me away. I couldn't help but burst into tears right on the porch of the school. Frank hugged and comforted me. 
I wanted to make up with my friends and get rid of my aunt. I couldn't think of anything, but one day, my mom accidentally gave me an idea. We were having lunch when a spider suddenly ran across the floor next to us. Mom laughed and said that her sister would have fainted if she had seen it. She has always been terribly afraid of insects. If she sees even a tiny bug, she immediately screams. When I got to school, I asked Julia if we could talk. At first, she didn't want to listen to me, but then curiosity got the best of her. I told her about the phobia of the principal and shared my plan. After school, we discussed everything with the other girls and decided to act the next day. I bought a bag of insects at a pet store and brought them to school. When the principal left her office, we sneaked there and put the insects into her bag. Then we hid around the corner in the hallway and waited. When the principal came back, we came closer and watched her through the half open door. She was looking for something in her bag when she suddenly screamed loudly. She dropped her bag to the floor and the insects spread all over the office. The principal grew hysterical. She stopped shouting only to suddenly clutch her heart and sink to the floor. Everyone was confused, but Frank quickly realized what had happened. He ran up to my aunt, sat down next to her and gave her first aid. I came to my senses and called an ambulance. My aunt was taken to a hospital. When she came to, I went into her room. I felt a little ashamed because we had brought her to such a state. I want to apologize for everyone. We went too far with the last prank. My aunt pursed her lips and looked at me, annoyed. I didn't expect anything else from you. You will never amount to anything. After such words, I no longer felt sorry for her. I hoped she would admit she had been wrong too, but nothing of that sort happened. Soon, a doctor walked in. He said that if it hadn't been for Frank, things would have ended much worse. But even that didn't change her opinion of my boyfriend. Your Frank is just like everyone else. There's only one good boy among you. Charlie will definitely become someone. I tensed up. Charlie? What does he have to do with anything? He's the only one who didn't take part in your nonsense. He even helped me and told me every time someone broke rules. So that's who had ratted us out. Wow, Charlie. Even after Frank had helped him work out. The doctor said that my aunt shouldn't be stressed out. She needed absolute rest for at least a month. After being discharged from the hospital, she was about to leave. I cautiously asked if she was going to come back to our school. Certainly not. Your principal just went on vacation and asked me to fill in for her. We are old friends. One of your teachers will act as your principal until she comes back. And I've had enough. So my aunt hadn't just come to visit? She had wanted to help a friend? By the way, I hope that the cheerleading club will stay closed. I saw your performance on TV and immediately decided my school wouldn't be known for something so disgraceful. Had she seen that broadcast? So that's why she had immediately closed our club? Before leaving, my aunt demanded my parents make sure I behaved from then on. Mom almost burst out crying again, and I couldn't bear it any longer. Look at how many people you have turned against you. What if you are the problem and not everybody else? You are a mean tyrant and there's nothing wrong with cheerleading. My aunt opened her mouth in surprise. She looked at me in shock for several long seconds and then turned to my parents. Did you hear what she said? I warned you, it's all your parenting. You've let her get away with far too much. My dad suddenly interrupted her. Enough, we've been patient for a long time. I completely agree with my daughter. I hope we won't see each other again soon. Have a nice day. My aunt was upset and turned to look at my mother, but mom amazed everyone. Instead of keeping silent or agreeing as usual, she took our side. Even though we are relatives, you should stay out of my family's business. We have our own life here. My aunt looked indignant and said that we were ungrateful and wouldn't manage without her help. My dad quickly kicked her out. For the first time in recent weeks, we breathed a sigh of relief. At school, I told Frank about Charlie. He cornered him and that traitor confessed to everything. He had wanted to curry favor with the new principal, so he had ratted us out. I made up with Julia and the other girls. The cheerleading club is open again and I am still a member of it. My aunt doesn't call us anymore and we are very happy about it. Hi, I'm Sandra and I wanna tell you about my cunning boyfriend. Last summer, Hugh and I went to a summer camp. The girls there immediately began to sneak glances at us, looking at me with envy and at him with curiosity. I was already used to it though. Hugh was very handsome and many people didn't understand what it was that he saw in me. The same thing happened at the camp, but that time a girl called Tina went way too far. At the first pool party, she openly stared at my boyfriend. I decided to annoy her. 
got out of the water, went up to Hugh, and hugged him. But for some reason, he abruptly pushed me away. <laughs> Tina laughed loudly. I got angry, and I spent the whole evening hanging out with the other guys despite my boyfriend since he decided to be rude to me. In the end, he couldn't let it stand and apologized. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. It's just that you were so wet and cold after the pool that I pushed you away. We made up. I suggested something cool to get out of camp and spend the night on the riverbanks. We could take sandwiches, colas, and have a picnic. And then, but Hugh didn't let me finish and rejected the idea Yay. immediately. He was apparently very tired and wanted to get some sleep on his first day. Of course, it was unpleasant, but I agreed we would postpone it back then. I didn't know we'd have a fight so soon after that. The next day, a Mr. Muscle contest was announced for the boys at the camp. I was sure that my boyfriend would win, so I boldly applied for him. But Hugh got really angry. Why the hell did you make the decision for me? I don't want to participate. But he still had to, so he wouldn't seem like a coward. I felt guilty, so I decided I would support Hugh as much as I could. I even made a fan poster with his name. But he did not appreciate my efforts again and gestured for me to put the poster away. The participants stood in a line and grabbed the barbells on command. All the guys lifted them over their heads, but Hugh only lifted his a few centimeters over the floor and then screamed and grabbed his back. My mom worked as a massage therapist. She had taught me what to do in situations like this. I ran up to Hugh, laid him on the floor, and I took off his t-shirt. But when I started warming up my hands to do a therapeutic massage, Hugh jumped up and shouted, Stop embarrassing me! And that was the perfect moment for Tina to get closer to my boyfriend. And she took full advantage of the situation. That mean girl handed Hugh a bottle of water, let him lean on her shoulder, and walked him to his bed. That was the last straw for me. It wasn't the first time Hugh had snapped at me over nothing, and now he did it in front of that nasty Tina. I began to suspect Hugh had flirted with her behind my back, and now he was just snapping at me instead of telling me the truth. I suffered all day thinking about it, and in the evening, I decided I would go talk to Hugh. After curfew, I snuck up to the door to his room, but as soon as I came around the corner, it opened. Hugh came out with a huge sports bag and, nervously looking around, went somewhere. Well, well, that was pretty weird. I followed my boyfriend. He headed towards the beach and walked into a small room for cleaners. There was no staff there at night, but I immediately realized who must have been waiting for Hugh in that secluded place, Tina. I was shaking with fury. We had only arrived there just a couple of days ago and Hugh had already found a new girlfriend? I decided I would ruin their date and holding my breath, I looked through the window. I wish Tina had been there. Guess what I saw instead? My boyfriend was taking off his silicone suit and with it, his inflated muscles and abs. Instead of the handsome guy I knew all the girls were crazy about, I saw some string bean. I laughed nervously, but then anger went out. This weirdo had been pretending to be Apollo and making a fool of me. I'd been dating a knockoff jock for a whole month, and he had to answer for that. I burst into the room and pounced on the frightened Hugh. At first, he blushed and silently endured my accusations. But then, I guess he couldn't stand it any longer. You know, it wouldn't hurt for you to buy some kind of suit, too. One that would make you look curvier. You're too skinny. The only thing that kept me from dumping him right there were the other girls. I liked their envious looks, and I didn't want them to stop. So, I decided I wouldn't rush it. I could always just break up with that liar later. Until the end of our time at camp, I was rather cold with Hugh. And when I came back home, my parents told me some cool news. We were flying south. My older sister Rose and I had never packed so quickly. The next morning, I was already admiring the ocean from the window of my room. The vacation was most welcome. I needed a break to sort out my feelings for Hugh. Who would have thought that on the first day of our holiday, I would find another crush. He worked as a lifeguard on the beach. He was handsome, like a movie star. I fell in love at first sight. All day, I stared at him like a maniac. And then I decided I would get to know him. But the guy mistook me for a waitress and ordered a mojito. It was a complete failure. In our room, I told Rose about everything and she promised to help. The next day, she sat down next to the lifeguard in a bar and started chatting with him about something. He immediately was interested in my sister. Of course, she had an amazing body, unlike me. Rose came back to me all pleased with herself. Rejoice, sis, I've worked it all out. Scott and I agreed to go for a walk on the beach tonight, but you're going to go instead of me. 
Try to make him like you. And I really tried my best. On the dates, I joked, tried to be clever. I even did the splits in the middle of dancing. But Scott didn't care. He just stared at his phone all evening and didn't even offer to pay for me at the cafe. And then he called me Sarah. Back in my room, I burst into tears. But that just made Rose angry. Quit whining. I'm not trying for nothing. Tomorrow, you'll go and make him notice you. Understand? And the next day, I decided it was time for extreme measures. I waited until Scott had climbed up into his tower, went deeper into the water, and I started waving my arms. Save me! Help! I'm drowning! And I played my part well. Scott rushed up to me with no hesitation, and when he swam up, I relaxed and pretended like I'd passed out. Scott carried me ashore in his arms and laid me on the sand. And I knew the most interesting thing was gonna happen. Mouth to mouth, I tasted his salty lips, opened my eyes, and jumped up in horror. It wasn't Scott, but his scary colleague. I cursed and <laughs> started spitting. Scott shook his head disapprovingly and left. My plan had failed again, and it looked like I had no chances left. I spent the entire day sipping cocktails at the bar with a sad look, and in the evening, I trudged back to my room. Near the hotel, I saw something unexpected. My sister was sitting on a bench next to Scott. I hid behind a branchy palm tree and overheard their entire conversation. I thought I asked you to play along. She was so upset. I'm sorry, but your sister is, how am I gonna put it, ugly and skinny. I couldn't even pretend that I was interested in her. I realized what had happened. Back then on the beach, Rose hadn't even tried to trick him. She had just openly asked Scott to flirt with her ugly sister. Why was everyone around me lying? I ran back to our room in tears. When Rose came back, I told her everything I thought about her, but she didn't even apologize. I just wanted to raise your self-esteem. Otherwise, you would have ruined my entire vacation with that ugly face. We had a terrible fight that night, but the scariest thing was, I started worrying about my looks. While my entire family was sunbathing on the beach, I stayed in my room looking at my figure in the mirror. Why hadn't I noticed that I was so flat and angular? I looked like a child. Long story short, I came back home feeling really insecure. The first thing I did was meet Hugh and agree to his idea. Do you remember when you told me about your special suit? The one that would make me look curvy? I agree. Please, show me where to buy it. After trying it on, I was delighted and I spent all my pocket money on the suit. After the holidays, a completely different Sandra came to school. Beautiful and confident. The girls bombarded me with questions. Wow, how have you changed so much over the summer? Fitness and proper nutrition work wonders. I spent my holidays in the gym and here's my result. Boys couldn't take their eyes off my new figure. Even Charlie, the most popular guy in school who had never paid any attention to me before, began to flirt with me. Things were going great, but then something ruined my mood. Tina, the girl that had been Hugh's biggest fan at summer camp, was transferred to our class. At school, she continued to chase my boyfriend. At first, I glared at her, but by the end of the day, I realized that I didn't feel anything anymore. I wasn't jealous. After all, I knew what kind of body was really hiding behind all his fake muscles. In just a week, I became the most popular girl in the school, and I started to distance myself from Hugh. When he invited me somewhere in the evening, I lied, and I said my parents had grounded me, so I'd be staying home and studying. He believed me and comforted me. Meanwhile, I was going on dates with Charlie. Our relationship had developed really quickly. And one evening, he even kissed me outside my house and handed me some kind of postcard. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'll be waiting for you at the water park. That made me worried. I'd be exposed if the suit got wet, but it really would have been stupid to refuse. So I accepted the invitation with a smile and decided I would just stay away from the water. The next evening, I stuck to my plan. While everyone was splashing and having fun on the sides, I was drinking Coke and eating pizza. But soon, Charlie gathered everyone at the bar. Guys, let's come and take a picture. Everyone stood close together for the photo, and I was in the center, right next to the birthday boy. The photographer gave us a signal and pressed the button. And at that moment, the worst possible thing happened. My silicone suit fell off. I screamed and I covered myself with my hands, but it was too late. Everyone had doubled over with laughter. Even the photographer couldn't help himself. I snatched the camera from him and I saw who was to blame for the biggest shame I've ever felt in my life. It was Hugh. 
He had stood right behind me and unzipped my suit. What a sneaky guy! And stupid, since he thought I would just leave it at that. I clapped my hands to stop all the laughter of my classmates, and I shouted, This was all Hugh. It was his idea. Do you think that's really his actual body? <laughs> of course it's not! Look! I grabbed my bully by the stomach and I pulled. The skin turned red and Hugh cried out in pain. But I'd seen everything with my own eyes. How was that possible? I laughed nervously and I ran to a locker room. There, I sat down on a bench and burst into tears. Less than five minutes later, someone sat down next to me and took my hand. I was sure it was Charlie who had come to comfort me, but it was Hugh. I'm sorry, that was harsh. But you really hurt me. Yesterday, I came to your house with flowers to ask your parents to let you out, but they said you weren't there. I waited for you outside and I saw you kissing that idiot Charlie. I felt really uneasy. It really did sound bad when you put it like that. I should have broken up with Hugh before trying to date another guy. I wiped all my tears away and I asked him how he had managed to pull off that body trick. Oh, that? That's easy. I was wearing the suit, but I was also working out at the same time. When my real body finally looked like the suit, I threw it away. I felt like such a complete idiot. What do you call a girl who's foolishly lost such a catch? I imagined Tina next to him and I felt jealous again. I absolutely had to make up with Hugh, even after all of this. Let's forget everything. Come to dinner tonight. We'll make up. Before Hugh could answer though, Tina's head appeared in the doorway. Well, are you coming? I missed you! Hugh let go of my hand and said, I'm going to the movies with Tina tonight, and we should break up. He left, and I was alone. Everything had taken care of itself. I would be with Charlie, and he was really no worse than Hugh. I washed my face, put on my makeup, and went out to the pool. But Charlie was already flirting with some other girl. I had lost at my own game. I had fallen for the good looks, and now Charlie had found someone way more beautiful than me. I threw that stupid suit in the trash and I went home. Hi everyone, I'm Sandra. My family used to be very rich. My younger sister Brittany and I got everything we wanted, but we hardly ever saw our parents, even on weekends, because they were always gone for work or various business meetings. But one day, everything changed. That morning, someone rang the doorbell. I opened the door and saw two strangers who showed me their police IDs and then walked into our house without even an invitation. Dad suddenly turned pale. Those people handcuffed him and didn't even let us say goodbye. Mom burst into tears and hugged Brittany and me. It'll be okay, girls. They'll let Dad go soon. But oh, how wrong she was. Dad was sentenced to five years in prison for some kind of financial fraud. All of our accounts were seized. Mom sold the house to pay off Dad's debt to his business partner. And with the remaining money, we rented a tiny studio in the residential area of New York. Brittany and I had to say goodbye to gadgets and cool clothes just to have enough money for food. Mom got a job as a pastry chef at a nearby coffee shop, but she didn't get paid much there. We didn't even have enough money to pay for my gymnastics classes. The whole thing was driving me crazy. I cried the whole time. My mom even let me skip school for a while, but after a month had passed, it got a little easier. I came back to school for the first time since that terrible morning. My classmate Courtney immediately noticed how different I looked and said loudly so everyone could hear her. Oh, look! Our princess is a beggar now. Let's see how you survive without any of your expensive toys. And she just kept bothering me the whole day. I'm sure none of you would have endured such bullying. I know I couldn't. In the end, I threw that witch's phone right into the wall and the screen shattered. Now you'll live on equal terms. No gadgets for either of us. Of course, I didn't get away with that. Courtney complained to the principal and he called my mom to the school. She had to give the last of our money for that stupid phone. I was sure mom would be furious at me, but at home she just silently served us pasta with sausage for our dinner. We couldn't even afford ketchup. Mom helped herself to the smallest portion and sat with a thoughtful look on her face. Brittany barely ate anything. She just smeared the food around on her plate. I simply couldn't bear to look at their sad faces. So I decided we would shake it up a little bit. Hey, do you two want to play Twister? And suddenly they came back to life. We spent the whole evening on the mat, and then we turned on the TV and laughed at the strange outfits some of the participants of some reality show were wearing. And for the first time in many a month, we had a great time together, as if we had no problems. 
but the next day at school, I had to face reality again. The girls were discussing their outfits for a Hawaiian-themed party, and I had nothing to brag about. So I came home in an awful mood and just collapsed on my bed. But Mom and Brittany did not let me despair. They brought out scissors, threads, bright patches, and flowers. After a few hours of painstaking work, my homemade outfit was ready, and I had the coolest costume at the party. Many girls came in wearing the same exact dresses, while mine was 100% unique. Everyone kept asking me where I'd bought it, but I just smiled mysteriously. However, something still ruined my mood that evening. I saw Courtney dancing limbo. Guys were there, watching with their mouths wide open as she, wagging her hips, bent backwards and passed under a low branch. After an amazing stunt like that, Courtney became the center of attention, and I just couldn't accept that. I let my hair down, set fire to a ribbon, and tied it around the branch. So then the branch caught fire. I then bent backwards, and I fearlessly walked right under it. Our classmates were delighted. I had clearly beaten Courtney, and she looked at me with pure envy as I walked into the house. I was about to grab myself a cocktail, but some guy beat me to it. He handed me a glass and smiled. I'm Simon. Nice moves out there. <laughs> yeah, that was nothing. I've been doing gymnastics ever since I was a kid. That's pretty cool. Well, I have a suggestion. Do you want to take part in a talent show? It's about to start, and I think you'd have a pretty good chance. I laughed. I really didn't believe anything was fair in those kind of shows. Without bribing anyone, I definitely would not be advancing beyond the qualifying round. And since I had no money, so I turned Simon down. But he suddenly said, I'll pay you for every round you pass. You see, my sister takes part in the show. She can't stand Courtney, but also she can't beat her. That's why I'm looking for a good gymnast who can snatch away the victory from that girl. My sister would be so thrilled. Hmm, that was actually a pretty tempting offer, but it was also kind of mean. Of course, I wanted to beat Courtney, but not at something like that. Simon was upset when I said no, but he left me his number just in case I changed my mind. By the next day, though, I had already forgotten about him. However, when I got home from school, I heard loud sobbing. Mom was sitting on the couch and covering her face with her hands. It turned out that she'd gotten into big trouble at work. While she'd been in the bathroom, someone had come in and stole all of the cash. The owner of the coffee shop had blamed everything on my mom. Not only did he fire her, but he was also making her pay compensation. I immediately remembered Simon's suggestion. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad? The next day made my decision for me when I walked into the classroom and heard Courtney saying, Today is the last day you can pitch in on tomorrow's party in honor of the end of the school year. Damn it. With all the problems with dad and moving, I'd completely forgotten about that. And now I was flat broke. But missing such an amazing party would be a crime. So the only thing I could do was bear the humiliation and beg Courtney. I took her aside and I asked her for a postponement. Only a week, and then I would transfer just the right amount to her card. Oddly enough, she agreed. So the next evening, I came to the party, happy. I was sitting on a sunbed by the pool with a cocktail and a slice of pizza. But then, Courtney screamed loudly, Hey! What the hell are you doing here, freeloader? You didn't chip in on the food! Get out! Everyone stared at me and started whispering to each other. I had never felt so humiliated. I threw down my food and I ran away while everyone watched me and it booed me. Courtney made me look like some kind of beggar. Beating her at a competition didn't seem to mean much to me anymore. So the same evening, I called Simon and I agreed to his proposal. The next day, I came to the casting. It wasn't too hard to surprise the jury and they unanimously let me become a contestant. As promised, Simon paid me for my efforts. That evening, with a smile, I handed my mom a stack of dollars. Of course, I didn't tell her the whole truth. Mom definitely would not have understood. I had to lie and say that the organizers of the show paid each participant that advanced to the next round. So mom, Brittany, and I watched that show together on TV, and I was doing so good. However, Courtney was just as good. It really wouldn't be as easy to beat her as I thought it would. My mom used the money I'd gotten to settle things with the owner of the coffee shop. She got another job and almost stopped being home. Our lives had changed again. I went from one round to the next and I got money from Simon. We had started to eat and dress better and everything was fine, but with each round, it became harder and harder to compete with Courtney. But in the end, we both managed to reach the finals. I couldn't come up with an idea for a performance for a long time, but then I remembered how much my trick with the fire had impressed everyone at the party. So I decided to do something similar, only a little more spectacular. 
During practice, I soared up on a flaming ring and performed extremely difficult acrobatic stunts under the dome. When I came down, Mom immediately ran up to me. What were you doing? That is so dangerous. But I explained that everything was very well thought out, even to the smallest details, so I wouldn't be taking any risks. Mom and Brittany were satisfied. So the next day, they came to support me during the final round, and I was terribly worried. To get my mind off things, I watched the performances of my rivals from the wings. When Courtney appeared on stage, I held my breath. I wondered just what she'd come up with. I expected just about anything but what I actually saw. Courtney set fire to the ring and flew up on it right under the dome. And at that moment, I almost burst out crying. That horrible girl had seen my performance during practice and had stolen my idea. And now I had nothing to show, but I had to act while there at least was some time left. So I found Simon in the audience and I asked for help. He quickly figured out how to save the situation. Just get up there using your hair. I mean, look how long it is. No one's ever done it before. You would absolutely win. It seemed kind of insane, but Simon found a way to convince me. He promised me a double fee for winning. I went on stage and I did everything he had told me to. Simon turned out to be right. When I was at the top, the audience and the jury enthusiastically gasped and applauded. I started doing my complex stunts to music when there was suddenly a flash of light and I was blinded. I squeezed my eyes shut and I started rubbing them. But when I opened them, everything around me was blurry. My head was spinning and I felt so scared, I screamed, down, please, let me down. And as you might have guessed, Courtney won. After the humiliating award ceremony, I trudged back to the locker room to quickly change my clothes and leave. But then I saw a strange sight. Courtney was hugging Simon and squealing happily. Hooray! Brother, I won, I won! Brother? I was rooted to the spot. Those two had played me like a fiddle. Simon had suggested that I take part in the show to set me up and soothe his infuriating sister's ego at the very last moment. He was the one who had shown the light into my eyes, and I was gonna prove that by any means necessary. Getting access to the cameras turned out to be really easy. I flirted with the cameraman a little and left him my number. The guy was so happy that he immediately showed me all of the footage. I rubbed my palms impatiently. Now I would expose those liars and I would show proof to the jury. But again, I was expecting almost anything except what I actually saw. In the video, my own sister, Brittany, was using her watch to reflect sunlight into my eyes. I clenched my fists. Of all people, why was Brittany setting me up? I asked the cameraman to send the video to my phone and I resolutely went to deal with my sister. But I bumped into Simon in the hallway. I didn't want to talk to him because he'd also turned out to be a liar, but he grabbed my arm anyway. Sandra, wait, I really wanted you to win. Before the show, Courtney and I made a bet. If she won, she'd be able to keep doing gymnastics, but if she lost, she would give it up forever because it was so dangerous. It's, it's just that I'm afraid for my sister after what happened to our mom. That's her. She used to be an acrobat when she was young and she performed in a circus without any safety ropes. And one day she fell and now she can never walk again. I'm sorry about your mom, but you can't be afraid of everything forever. I found a video I hadn't watched in forever without crying on my phone, but now I calmly showed it to Simon. I was 10 years old in it. I had gone up on the highest balance beam. I did a backflip and landed badly and fell. It hurt like hell. I had three surgeries. I couldn't move properly for more than a year. And after I recovered, I was too afraid to even set foot in a gym. But my mom convinced me not to give up. And as you can see, I managed to overcome my fear. Simon was touched by my story. He promised he would try to come to terms with his sister's hobby and he handed me the money. Take it, you deserve it. Thank you for agreeing to help me. I came home and I waved the wad of dollars in front of Brittany's face. Take this, pipsqueak. I got what I wanted. My sister sobbed, threw a pillow at me, and ran. So I started to rummage through her things, trying to find some sort of explanation for her weird behavior. I opened her laptop and I saw a folder called Video Diary. Well, well, I figured I'd find out what was in that little traitor's head. In the video, Brittany was sitting on her windowsill with a cup of coffee in her hand. I never thought I'd say this, but being poor is kinda cool. My mom used to go out to all sorts of glamorous parties and my sister hung out in shopping malls all the time. But now we're together a whole lot. Chatting, playing, sewing costumes. I wish it was always like this. 
I wiped a tear from my face. I guess Brittany hadn't meant me any actual harm. She was just afraid she'd be alone again when her family got money. I left her room to find my sister and hug her. You dummy. Money can be spent in different ways. Things don't have to be like they used to be. For example, we could travel together. Just you, me, and mom. Brittany apologized for setting me up and leaking my performance to Courtney. I wasn't angry anymore, but I did make her promise to always tell me everything straight up instead of making stupid plans on her own. And the next day, we packed our bags and went to the ocean. When our dad is free, I think we'll definitely go there again. All of us. I fell right into the water, and the waves immediately carried me away from the yacht. I panicked. I was a very bad swimmer. All sorts of horror stories about sharks immediately came to my mind. Help! Hey, wait! I'm here! No one heard me. The yacht was sailing further and further away, taking my chances of salvation with it. I had swallowed a lot of seawater, and tears were streaming down my face. It was the end. All of a sudden, someone grabbed my arm. Thinking it was a shark, I screamed and turned around. Hi, my name is Lana. I never went to parties and was always reading books. I was a nerd in college, and I was absolutely obsessed with comics. At first, I just liked reading them, and then I started coming up with and illustrating my own stories. I was massively inspired by Dan Evans, a famous comic artist, and I dreamed of becoming as cool as he was. One day, I was walking through college hallways and reading comics as usual. I turned the corner and suddenly bumped into someone. My book fell out of my hands. I looked up and froze. Damn it, it was Blake, the coolest guy in college, and my crush. Our classmates surrounded us, and someone noticed that my comic had fallen to the floor. They immediately started laughing at me. I wanted to sink through the floor with humiliation. I stared at Blake in horror and was silent. Hey, look at that. Blake's so handsome he left our nerd speechless. Blake laughed. I'm not interested in such quiet and plain girls. That hurt me, and I ran away so I wouldn't burst out crying right in front of everyone. Wandering around the city, I decided I wanted to change, become bold and interesting. I walked into a cafe, sat down at a far table, and started drawing on my tablet. It had always helped me calm down. Then, I suddenly heard someone behind me say, This looks amazing. I turned around and saw a guy with piercings and a bunch of tattoos. He sat down at my table, and we got to talking. The guy's name turned out to be Henry, and he was a master at a tattoo parlor that liked drawing too. I looked at his tattoos and had an idea. What if I got a tattoo too? When I told Henry about my thought, he supported me and brought me to his tattoo parlor. We made a sketch together, and I came home with a tattoo on my neck. It looked very unusual and super cool. I decided that I wouldn't tell anyone about it just yet. The next day, I wore a jumper with a high collar to college. During a lecture, we were suddenly told that a week-long trip to Florida would be organized for the best of students. They read out the list of those who would go, and I heard my name. I always wore oversized clothes, though, and I heard everyone start making fun of me. I bet she'll even wear a hoodie to the beach. I gritted my teeth with anger. I was so tired of those bullies, and I decided that one tattoo wasn't enough for me. They thought I was a shy nerd. I would show them all. After college, I went back to the tattoo parlor and told Henry I wanted to get more tattoos. He tried to dissuade me. You should think it over and not do it when you're so emotional. Get temporary tattoos for now, okay? Live with them for a while, and if you don't change your mind, we'll make them permanent. I thought about it and agreed. I drew all the new sketches myself. A few days later, Henry transferred them to my skin right before the trip. I felt like a completely different person. In Florida, our group checked into a hotel. I ended up in a room with Miley, my best friend. No one found her impressive either, which was probably why we'd become friends. I hadn't even told Miley about my tattoos yet. I had to lie and say that I wasn't feeling well so she would go to the beach without me. About a half hour later, I plucked up my courage and I changed into a bikini. I let my hair down and put on a cap and dark glasses. Then I went to the beach and slowly walked along the shore. Blake suddenly noticed me. He immediately started complimenting my figure and my tattoos. Just imagine, he hadn't recognized me. I slowly took off my glasses and smiled coquettishly at him. To say that Blake was stunned would be an understatement. 
Well, who's speechless now? Everyone was shocked by my transformation. They crowded around me and looked at me like I was a museum exhibit. Everyone really liked my tattoos. And only the prettiest girl in college called them tasteless. Nora, just admit that you're jealous. Lana turned out to have a very cool figure, and her tattoos are pretty great too. Nora turned green with anger, and <laughs> I was over the moon. While we were hanging out on the beach, Blake was doing everything he could to please me. He brought me cocktails, adjusted my sunbed, and put sunscreen on my shoulders. The seawater could quickly wash away my temporary tattoos, so I had to sit in the sun. When we got back to the hotel, Miley came up to me, upset. Why didn't you tell me about your tattoos? I thought we were friends. I had to admit that only one of my tattoos was real, just so I could calm my friend down. One day, we were walking to the beach and saw an announcement about an upcoming palm tree party. The queen of the beach would be chosen there. Of course, all the girls immediately wanted to participate. Lana, let's go to the party together. Hmm? Had I heard right? Of course, I wanted to, and I immediately agreed. However, when I was returning to the hotel, Nora suddenly blocked my way. She forcefully grabbed my shoulder and hissed, Stay away from Blake. I looked at her defiantly. Or what? Or you'll regret it. It's pointless to threaten me. Blake likes me, so deal with it. I walked by the shocked Nora into the hotel. The same day, Miley and I went shopping. I was hoping to find a beautiful but not very expensive dress. We were exhausted by the time I finally got lucky. I would have never worn such a dress before, but that day, I liked it, surprising even myself. Back in our room, I hung it up on the back of a chair and went to bed, looking forward to the next night. Everyone would be stunned after seeing me, but in the morning, I was in for an unpleasant surprise. When I got out of bed, I saw something terrible. My dress had been cut up. I was shocked. It didn't take me long to guess who had done it. Of course, it must have been Nora. Ugh, she was so nasty. But she wasn't going to get rid of me that easy. I went down to the reception and asked for sewing supplies. While everyone was out hanging on the beach, I drew a sketch of a new outfit and started to work on the dress. I was able to turn it into an original Hawaiian-style top and skirt. To be honest, I liked my new outfit even more than I'd like the dress. Remember how I'd said that everyone had been shocked to see me with tattoos and in a bikini? Well, my appearance at the party had the same effect. Blake met me at the entrance to the beach, and when we appeared on the dance floor together, mmm, that was something. You should have seen our classmates' faces. Nora, once again, turned green with envy. Everyone was having fun, dancing limbo and drinking tropical cocktails. Then, the competition began, and all the girls lined up by a small catwalk. One by one, they walked in and posed while cool music played. We were told that the one with the loudest applause would win. Nora did great, but when I got on the catwalk… Well, you get it, right? The beach exploded with applause. It was incredible. I had never felt so admired in my life. I became the queen of the beach and was presented with a crown made of palm leaves. I went to the bar to get a cocktail, and I suddenly noticed that Blake was nowhere to be found. After going around the whole beach, I still couldn't find him. Hmm, where had he gone? Then Miley came up to me. She looked kind of upset. Lana, I wasn't sure whether to tell you or not, but come on, you've got to see this for yourself. I was confused, but I followed her, and soon we came to a hammock hanging between palm trees. It looked like Nora and Blake were in it, and they were… kissing? How was this possible? I felt so hurt. Blake pushed Nora away and got up. <sighs> I didn't even want to listen to what he had to say, and I ran away. I didn't even notice that my palm crown had fallen off my head. I walked along the beach, <laughs> crying my eyes out. I sat on a bench and realized that I really was a loser after all. What was the point of changing if Blake had just chosen another girl anyway? A man came and sat down next to me. At first, I got scared and wanted to leave, but he suddenly complimented my tattoos. These are very interesting drawings. The artist must be talented. Actually, I drew the sketches for these tattoos myself. The man looked surprised and said that if I kept practicing, I'd have a great future ahead of me. I suddenly realized that his face looked really familiar but I couldn't remember for the life of me where I'd seen him. The next day, we had a boat trip planned. We arrived at the yacht, and Blake came up to me to talk. You are such a traitor! If you liked Nora, you shouldn't have been flirting with me. But I only came to the hammock because I was told you would be there. I looked at him blankly. Who told you that? It was Miley. 
Miley? Why had she done it? After walking around the entire deck, I found Miley at the stern of the yacht, and I asked her about Blake. My friend's face twisted with anger. I had never seen her look like that. Yes, I called Blake to the hammock and I ruined your dress. Nora asked me to. Miley had conspired with Nora. A against me? I was speechless. We used to both be Blaine, but lately you've gotten so popular and I'm still a nobody. Did she really do this all out of envy? I didn't want to lose my friend, so I tried to reason with her. Look, we're still friends. I'll forget about everything you've done, and everything can be just like it used to. I tried to hug her, but Miley suddenly pushed me away. I tripped and I fell overboard. The waves immediately started carrying me away from the yacht, and I panicked. I was a very bad swimmer. All sorts of horror stories about sharks immediately came to my mind. Help! Hey, wait! I'm here! But no one heard me. The yacht was sailing farther and farther away, taking my chances of salvation with it. I had swallowed a lot of seawater, and tears were streaming down my face. It was the end. All of a sudden, someone grabbed my arm. I screamed, turned around, and saw Blake. <sighs> it turned out he had seen me fall and had jumped in after me. I wasn't that scared anymore. Soon, people on the yacht noticed. They dropped a life buoy and helped us get back on board. People immediately crowded around us. They wrapped me in a towel and started rubbing my arms. Miley suddenly appeared next to me and asked sarcastically, how are your tattoos after swimming in the seawater? Even after everything that she had done to me, that betrayal came as a surprise. Nora immediately grabbed my arm and rubbed my drawing away. Of course, the tattoos started to fade. When everyone realized that my tattoos weren't real, they started to make fun of me again. I hoped Blake would stand up for me, but he looked disappointed. I was amazed by how brave you were to have gotten so many tattoos, but you're just a liar. Even him kissing Nora hadn't hurt me this bad. Yeah, my tattoos were fake. So what? Was it really that important? Back at the hotel, I had hidden from everyone by the pool. To get my mind off things, I'd been reading various comics on my tablet, and I suddenly came across a photo of my favorite artist. Looking at the portrait of Dan Evans, I couldn't believe my eyes. That was the man I talked to on the embankment. That was why his face was so familiar to me. Why hadn't I recognized him right away? There was no contact information of Dan Evans publicly available, so I had no way of finding him again. I had had a one in a million chance, and I had missed it. That made me feel even worse than I had before, and I burst into tears again. As we were leaving Florida, my classmates weren't paying attention to me or making fun of me. I came home in a terrible mood. Standing in the shower, as I was angrily washing off the remnants of my tattoos, I suddenly realized I wanted to get real ones. Not because I was feeling hurt, but because I had thought about it and come to a decision, just like Henry had told me to do. The tattoos seemed to reflect my inner world and they helped me to express myself. So, the next day, instead of going to college, I went to the tattoo parlor. Henry was really happy to see me again, and he didn't try to dissuade me. So, in a few days, I had a lot of new, permanent tattoos. As I was getting the last batch of them, a visitor suddenly walked into the parlor. I turned around and I froze with my mouth open. I thought I was dreaming. It was Stan Evans. It turned out that Henry was his nephew. I almost fainted from the news. Dan Evans suddenly took a closer look at me and smiled. Oh, I remember you. You're that talented girl I saw in Florida. <sighs> I couldn't miss such an amazing opportunity again, so I asked him to take a look at some of my comics. Mr. Evans really liked them. He studied them for a long time, and then he made me a very surprising offer. As you know, my name is well known in the industry. We could write up a contract. I could become your agent and recommend you to a publishing house. If I hadn't already been sitting, I think I would have fallen over. We signed our contract the same evening. And the next day, I was on cloud nine when I returned to college. Seriously, I mean, my dream had come true. So I was over the moon. When I walked into the classroom, everyone immediately noticed my tattoos. Nora started to make fun of me. What'd you do, rob a sticker store? I was kind of expecting that reaction. So I defiantly took wet wipes out of my bag and rubbed my tattoos with them. My skin turned red and the drawing stayed clear. Well, you satisfied? My classmates were stunned, again, and I felt like a real queen, even if my crown had been left somewhere on a beach in Florida. After the lecture, Blake apologized to me and suggested that we start over. But 
I was already over him. I wanted to be with a person who would love me for me, and not what I had. Henry and I saw each other each and every day. I was constantly asking him about my comics, and he promised they were gonna come out. One day, I went to a cafe and accidentally heard something on the TV. I usually wasn't all that interested in the news, but I heard a familiar name. For many years, the identity of Dan Evans has been shrouded in mystery. But it recently came to light that he stole many works from young, talented artists and claimed them for his own. Right now, the charlatan has already been put on the wanted list. I mechanically took a sip of my coffee without really tasting it. Still not fully realizing what I'd heard, I called Henry. His phone was unavailable. Then I went to the tattoo parlor, but the door was locked and the windows had been boarded up. How was this possible? I had been there just one day before! I started shaking. Could it be that I had been deceived? I couldn't believe it, so I waited for Mr. Evans or Henry to show up. But time passed and they were nowhere to be seen. One day, I went to a store and suddenly saw a familiar cover on the shelf. I had been the one to draw that. Those were my comics! My heart was pounding as I looked at the author's name and froze. It said Henry Wood. A month has passed since then. I filed a police report and even went to court. Hi, I'm Kate. After my parents got divorced, I didn't want to spend time at home, so I was going to parties all the time. During one of these evenings in a bar, two girls came on stage, and they started to move so nicely that I couldn't look away. To be honest, I was a little envious. Boys only had eyes for those dancers. They didn't pay any attention to me, as usual. After finishing their hot dance, the girls moved to the bar and suddenly invited me to join them. They introduced themselves as sisters, Alex and Susie Wood. We perform here every day, but we've never seen you before. We need a third participant for our team in a twerking championship. You look pretty hot. Why don't you try it? I was delighted, and I showed the girls my abilities. But my moves only made the bartender and the sisters <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Kate! Stop. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> we'll start with the basics. There really are no other options anyway. The next day, I went to a dance studio. Susie and Alex turned out to be patient teachers. It was only after a couple of lessons that I realized how to shake my booty properly, and I gradually got better at it. But I started to spend less and less time at home because of my new hobby. And in the end, mom started asking me questions. I lied and I said I was going to drama school. She was a teacher at a ballet school, so she definitely would not be approving of my new hobby. A month later, though, I got good enough to perform in a nightclub for the first time. I was really worried. When I saw what I would have to dance in, I started having second thoughts. The costume was too short and tight, but the girls quickly convinced me. In this outfit, all the guys will be yours. That's what you came to us for. The Wood Sisters turned out to be right. When I went on stage, guys were practically drooling. It was the first time I'd found myself in the spotlight and it felt really damn good. But all of a sudden, someone grabbed my leg. I fell and I was dragged into the audience. How rude. This was not how fans were supposed to behave. I dusted myself off, jumped to my feet, and I got ready to scold whoever had grabbed me. But instead of some guy, I saw my mom. Her festive hat didn't match her menacing gaze at all. Mom took me away from my friends, and you should have seen what started then. What are you doing? Why are you shaming our family? And so on and on and on and so forth. I got tired of listening to it, and so I said with a malicious smile, I just like twerking more than your boring ballet. And for some reason, my mom got really hurt about that. Such an idiot is no daughter of mine. You better be moved out by the time I get home. <sighs> Why was she so harsh? So what if I forgot about her birthday once and danced in a nightclub once? Was that really a reason for her to kick me out? I was so angry with my mom, I didn't even argue. I just packed my things and I drove myself to the nearest hotel. I didn't really have anywhere else to go. I still resented my father for leaving us, but I had enough savings to live in a hotel for a whole month with no issues. During that time, I got even better at twerking than my teachers. Alex noticed and put me in the center. Now, the whole performance revolved around my twerking. And that only meant one thing. It was up to me to make sure our team would be chosen to represent our state at the national competition. And finally, the day of the performance came. I was so worried. And I looked out from behind the curtains to assess the strength of our competitors. And I've gotta admit, those girls did great. They even brought their coach on stage to the applause of the audience. I was so shocked that I dropped a water bottle on my foot. It was my mom. 
I couldn't bring myself to perform, and I just left to my own shame. How could that be? My mother, a ballet star, had suddenly gotten interested in the modern dancing that had made her kick out her own daughter in the hotel. I sat on the bed and I burst into tears because of this injustice. But soon, my sobbing must have annoyed one of my neighbors. There was a knock at my door. I'm sorry, I'll try to keep it down. But some guy came in, sat next to me, and patted me on the shoulder. Hey, I'm Phil, the bartender. Do you recognize me? I liked your dance. I wiped away my tears. At least one person liked it. Phil handed me his phone. But in that video, I wasn't twerking at all. I was twisting my hips like an idiot and waving my arms like crazy. It had been filmed in a bar right before I met the Wood Sisters. I laughed and I was about to give him his phone back. But then I saw something curious on the screen. My friends were standing right behind me. Alex was pointing her finger right at me. I asked Phil, do you like how these two dance? They perform at your bar all the time. But he said that dances like that weren't popular in the bar and he'd only seen them once. The same day they had added me into their team. Hmm, well, weird. Why did Alex and Susie lie about performing there? Spending time with Phil was fun though, and soon I forgot all about my suspicions. It turns out that he was from another state. He'd used to rent an apartment, but he moved into a hotel closer to his work. We exchanged numbers. I tossed and turned all night, replaying the latest events in my head. And in the morning, I came to the dance studio to apologize to the girls for leaving the day before, but they didn't even listen to me. Alex showed me a certificate allowing them to go to the final and said angrily, we won without you. It turns out replacing you is easy. Alex pointed at some girl. When she turned around, I opened my mouth in surprise. She was a grown woman, much older than us. The oddities didn't end there. The girls kicked me out of their team and demanded that I pay for every lesson they had given me. But why? I thought we were friends. Yeah, sure. Why would we bother teaching such an awful dancer for free? An ungrateful one too. And that's how our short-lived friendship came to an end. Now I owed the sisters a ton of money. Phil lent me some food. I could no longer afford to stay rightfully offended. So I decided to save up on rent and move in with my father until I had what I needed. Dad was very happy to see me. He fed me a delicious dinner and gave me a room. Everything was going great until I started unpacking. I found a picture of Susie and Alex in one of the drawers and I laughed nervously. Were they following me? I ran downstairs to talk to dad. He said he wanted to introduce me to his fiance because she had just returned from the store. A woman came in carrying packages. I recognized her even before dad said, Kate, meet Linda Wood. My dad was dating my former friend's mom. That's why the girls had found a replacement for me so quickly. That's why there was a photo of them in the drawer. Our meeting at the bar was not an accident. There was no way. But why did their family set up everything like this? I decided I would figure it out. I repacked my suitcase and I went back to the hotel, even though dad tried to stop me. The first thing I found on social media was the schedule of the performances for the trio. And I got lucky. The dancing group Panthers, as they called themselves now, was giving a show that evening in the same club where my mom had humiliated me. Behind the wall, Phil was preparing to go there for his shift. I asked him for a favor. Please, can I go in your place? Just for one night, I really need to find something out. And well, earning some extra money really would not hurt. At first, Phil hesitated, but I managed to convince him. I washed off my makeup, put on a fake mustache, and I hid my hair under a baseball cap and I put on men's clothes. So in the evening, it wasn't Kate who stood behind the bar, but a cute guy called Kurt. And I didn't have to wait long for the Panthers to appear. The spotlight shone on my stepmother and stepsisters and they performed pretty well. After the dance, Alex and Susie came up to the bar, just like clockwork. I was mixing cocktails for them and eavesdropping, but as luck would have it, the sisters weren't talking about anything important. I decided it was my time to act. I playfully twirled my mustache and I hit on the fools. After they had been completely charmed by my compliments, I asked them, where's your third member, that ugly blonde girl? And the sisters' eyes lit up. Talking over each other, they told the handsome bartender the whole truth. And that's how I found out that our moms had gone to the College of Choreography together and hated each other because of a guy. After graduation, my mom chose to pursue ballet and Linda Wood picked modern dance. That guy was my dad. He married my mother, however, 
Many years later, he met the girl that he'd loved in college and left my mom for her. But that hadn't been enough for Mrs. Wood. She'd put together a team for her daughters and sent them to lure me to her side. That toad wanted me to leave my mom with no support system, to take away her only daughter. And even worse, she'd succeeded. I hated them with all my heart, and I barely stopped myself from revealing my true identity. But I got a grip, and I spilled my cocktail on Alex, uh, pretending it was an accident. The sisters got angry and left, and I calmly finished my shift and returned to the hotel. Now, it was clear to me why mom had trained those girls for the twerking competition. Back then, at the club, she had seen me with the daughters of her enemy and decided to at least beat Linda Wood at one thing. She would prove to herself she was better than her opponent. I felt so bad for my mom. I told Phil everything. We spent the night thinking of ways to help her. And in the morning, the plan was ready, and I came home to make up with her. Mom greeted me with a stern look, but when she found out that I knew everything, she softened a little, especially after my promise. I won't go twerking in nightclubs anymore if you do as I say and you don't argue. We got into Phil's car and we drove to his home state. The teams for the final were being chosen there. Twerking wasn't nearly as popular there as it was in our state. Only a few teams performed it, even though they weren't great. Just a couple of my moves were enough for the jury to choose our team. It was too easy. But I knew what kind of battle I was in for in the final, so I decided to do something risky. The rules of the competition said that there had to be three people in a team, but nowhere did they say what exactly each member was supposed to do. So, in our team, everyone did what they did best, and we spent a lot of time getting ready. Finally, our moment came. The Panthers did great, as always. Mom was very nervous, but my fighting spirit was infectious. Let's go. We'll beat those mangy cats. And we absolutely obliterated our competitors. I twerked, mom danced next to me in point shoes, and Phil played music for us using drumsticks and bottles. He always entertained himself that way when there were only a few people in the bar. We were given a standing ovation. The jury members unanimously chose us as the winners of the competition. But the Woods didn't even get into the top three. During the awards ceremony, I saw their faces full of envy in the audience, and I waved my hand spitefully. I was sure that mom was also beaming with joy on the pedestal, but for some reason, she didn't look that way. On the way out, I asked her what the matter was. She stroked my cheek and said sadly, Linda won in the end. After all, your father chose her. But the contest still helped us a lot. We got a lot of money. I paid off my stepsisters, and I rented a small dance studio not far from home. There, we started teaching girls how to dance. I taught twerking, and mom, ballet. We almost stopped fighting, and started spending time together more often. My personal life got better too. I no longer had to go to clubs in weird outfits to find a boyfriend. <laughs> After all, Phil and I had become a couple. Besides, remember, I promised my mom. Now, I only twerk in gyms and at competitions. But one day, my father came back into our life. He appeared on the doorstep with his things, and he asked us to let him in. He said he had nowhere else to go. Hi, my name is Naomi. I felt overlooked ever since I was a kid. My parents loved my sister Mandy more and always set her as an example. She won a gymnastics competition, and our parents decided to throw a party in her honor. A bunch of relatives and friends gathered at our house. Everyone admired Mandy, praised her, and gave her gifts. As usual, no one was paying any attention to me. I was terribly bored and decided to ask my boyfriend Brian over. When he came, I felt a bit better, but soon something terrible happened. The party was in full swing when all the guests went out for a moment. I was drinking juice and accidentally overheard a conversation in the next room. It was Brian talking to my sister. I've liked you for a long time, Mandy but I didn't know how to break up with Naomi. I didn't want to hurt her. My hands started shaking and I dropped my glass of juice. Mandy and Brian heard the noise and came into the living room. I was bursting with resentment and anger and tears came to my eyes. I hadn't been expecting anything good from my sister, but how could Brian have done that to me? Traitor, I don't want to see you anymore. I ran outside. Mandy always got the best of everything. She took first places in competitions and was best in class. Why couldn't I do that? I didn't have any talents at all. Before I noticed, I had come to the Central Park. A group of people caught my attention. 
Two guys were sitting on a bench and filming a girl who was moving strangely. I came closer and froze in surprise. I couldn't believe what the girl was doing. She was trying to get through a tennis racket without the strings. Why on earth was she doing that? They suddenly noticed me. One of them smiled at me and suggested I join them. We got to talking and it turned out they had recently created their own YouTube channel. Caleb, Rick, and Rose filmed different videos. They wanted to set as many strange records as possible and fulfilled insane tasks for their subscribers. Soon, Rose and Rick had to leave and Caleb suggested we go for a walk together. It seemed he liked me. Hanging out with him distracted me from unpleasant thoughts. I even forgot about Brian's betrayal for some time. We exchanged phone numbers and Caleb walked me home. The next day, he called and suggested we meet again. We all came to Rick's house and they recorded another strange video. Caleb was trying to eat a plate of jelly with Japanese chopsticks as quickly as possible. It had us in stitches. I liked hanging out with those guys and we started to see each other almost every day. They had a lot of cool ideas and it was interesting interesting to watch them. One day, their subscribers came up with an unusual task for Rose. She had to put on as many t-shirts as possible. However, just as they were about to start recording, Rose suddenly fell ill. They couldn't put off filming the video and Caleb suggested I take her place. Seriously? You want me to star in your video? It's not hard. You'll like it. I promise. In the end, I agreed and we went to the park. Rick put the camera on a tripod. Caleb explained what I was supposed to do one more time and we began. At first, I felt out of place and very shy. But then I got excited and relaxed. A crowd gathered around us. They were taking pictures and cheering me on with applause. I liked being the center of attention. It turned out to be very cool. In the end, I managed to put on 160 t-shirts and I looked like a round ball. In the evening, the guys edited the video and posted it on YouTube. The very next day, people had left a bunch of comments under it. The audience liked the video, but most of all, they liked me. They wanted me to be accepted into the team. Kayla, Brick, and Rose agreed and suggested we create content together. It was very sudden, but of course, I agreed. One day, we decided to film a breath holding competition. We decided to film the video at the water park. There was a cool pool with a transparent wall and different levels of depth there. Caleb had just bought a new action camera that could be used underwater. We set it up in the pool and took turns diving. Rick went first, then Rose, and Caleb. The results were more or less the same. They lasted for about a minute and a half. I was the last one to dive. As a child, I had really liked to swim and often held my breath for fun. So it wasn't hard for me not to breathe for a long time. When I surfaced, I saw that Caleb had jumped into the water again and was planning to dive after me. We thought you fainted or something. You were underwater for three whole minutes. Psst, just three? One day I had held my breath for almost five. Everyone was very surprised by my ability. They looked at me like they were seeing me for the first time. All of a sudden, a man came up to us. He turned out to be the owner of the water park. His name was Mr. Jones. You would never guess what he suggested. My business hasn't been doing great lately. A second water park with extreme slides has opened in the city and now people go there. I saw your videos on YouTube and watched you today. You're cool and I have a business offer for you. Film a commercial for my water park and put on an unusual show here. I'll pay you well. We looked at each other dumbfounded. Filming videos was our hobby, but we hadn't even thought we could earn money doing it. Of course, our videos were monetized, but we got very little money anyway. Naturally, we immediately agreed. Caleb recorded a promo for the pool video. He told our audience about the water park and asked them what kind of show they would like to see. A few days later, we read the comments and discussed the ideas. I saw an interesting suggestion. One subscriber had commented that she had once been to a store a real Barbie doll lived in. She suggested that we do something similar and build a house underwater. I had heard about a live Barbie too. However, that store had closed very quickly. Everyone liked the idea, but Caleb suggested switching it up a bit. Naomi should set a record for the amount of time spent in the pool. We'll focus on her feeling at home underwater. Mr. Jones liked our plan. He started preparing for the cool show where I was supposed to shine. I didn't tell anyone at home about my new hobby or the upcoming show. One day, I heard my parents discussing a show at the water park and realized they were going to be there. I couldn't wait. They would be so surprised to see me there. Finally, they would be proud of me and not Mandy. Speaking of Mandy, we hadn't spoken since the party. If we accidentally ran into each other, I pretended not to see her. On the day of the show, I felt terribly nervous. The team supported me as much as they could, but I lacked confidence, complained a lot, and even almost argued with Caleb. A lot of artists came to the water park. They performed on a special stage and a crowd of spectators had gathered around it. 
However, as soon as the host announced that I was about to dive into the pool, all attention immediately turned to me. To make everything look more impressive, we had come up with something interesting. I picked up a weight, fastened a safety rope to my leg, and dove into the deepest part of the pool. I didn't just sit there, but tried to dance beautifully. Of course, moving made me run out of air faster, but I managed to stay underwater for over two minutes anyways. I surfaced, caught my breath, and went down again, then again, and again, and again. When I came up, the audience would clap loudly, and that encouraged me. I felt like a real star. I had never got so much admiration and attention before. After a while, I started to get tired, and Caleb said I should take a break. I swam to the side of the pool and suddenly heard the host's loud voice. And now, welcome the unsurpassed champion, the young master of sports and rhythmic gymnastics, Mandy Moore! I thought I had heard wrong. It couldn't be happening. What was she doing there? I had Mr. Jones invited her? I looked at the stage and saw my sister. What was worse, I noticed my parents, who were watching her performance nearby. They hadn't even recognized me, all because of my stupid mask. To say that I was angry would be to say nothing. That was it. I had had enough. I was going to show them what I was capable of. Ignoring my fatigue, I sank back under the water. I didn't even use the safety rope. I got to the deepest part of the pool and hugged my knees to my chest because I was getting cold. I would prove to everyone that I was the best. I wanted to set a new record for holding my breath underwater. Soon, I could no longer tell how much time had passed. I suddenly felt very sick. I had a terrible headache and my chest started to burn. I wanted to pull the safety rope and get help, but then I remembered that I had dived without it. I had no strength left and I couldn't swim back up. I panicked and everything went dark. When I came to, I found myself lying on a bed. My worried parents were leaning over me. Naomi, how are you feeling? When I said everything was fine, my parents suddenly started yelling at me. How could you be so stupid? Risking your life for something so stupid. Don't do anything else like that again. Do you understand? Take a cue from your sister. If it hadn't been for her, you wouldn't have been saved at all. I wanted to feel indignant, but I froze with my mouth open. Why was he saying I wouldn't have been saved? No one saw you dive except Mandy. When you didn't come up for too long, she interrupted the performance and jumped into the pool. She's the one who pulled you out. I couldn't believe it. I'd been sure that Caleb had saved me. However, when I called him, he confirmed my parents' words. We agreed to meet in the park the following day. I came to the place where we had met, walked up to the guys and saw a familiar scene. The boys and Rose were sitting on a bench and filming some girl who was moving strangely. As I got closer, I suddenly realized that girl was Mandy. No, it couldn't be. She was trying to squeeze in through the racket. Unlike Rose, she was very flexible and she succeeded. Everyone immediately started whistling and applauding her loudly. Caleb didn't even notice me. It was like I was stuck in a nightmare, but that wasn't the worst part. It turned out that our subscribers wanted Mandy to become part of the team. The video with my dive had gained almost a million views, but it wasn't me everyone was discussing in the comments, but Mandy. More precisely, the way she had saved me. I was furious. I had tried so hard, almost drowned, and she got all the glory? I spent the day in a terrible mood and didn't talk to anyone. In the evening, I accidentally overheard Mandy and Caleb talking. Just imagine they were flirting. Caleb, doesn't it bother you that she has a boyfriend? Actually, Brian and I broke up. You would have known about it if you hadn't been acting like I didn't exist. Soon, I started to notice that Caleb was spending more time with Mandy than me. History repeated itself. The guy I liked had chosen Mandy over me again. But I wasn't about to give up so easily without first giving Caleb hell. Why are you acting like this? You liked me. Yes, I liked you, but that was in the past. Look at you. You're constantly angry and jealous, and your sister is cheerful, open-minded. She's a good person. Have you ever thought that you might be the problem and not her? His words really hurt me. I couldn't bear seeing him anymore and left the team. Nothing made me happy and I felt really down. I spent my days at home crying and watching stupid TV shows. One day, Mr. Jones called me. There were a lot of visitors in his water park thanks to our show and they all asked about me. I want to offer you a job. You would change into a mermaid costume and swim in the pool. We'll even build a small underwater house for you. What do you say? I agreed without hesitation. I hoped that it would help me get my mind off things and pass the time. I wasn't expecting to like that type of work, but to my surprise, I did. I spent all my free time at the water park. I was admired, constantly photographed, and the kids were crazy about me. I was surrounded by so much positivity that eventually I felt better. I started smiling and enjoying life again. One day, I saw two girls through the glass, judging by their identical clothes. They were sisters. One of them fell down and started crying, and the other helped her up and comforted her. It was so sweet that I felt like crying. Why couldn't Mandy and I get along? After all, we were family. 
I couldn't stop thinking about that scene all day. Maybe Caleb had been right, and I was the one at fault, not Mandy. I probably just wanted to blame her for all my failures, and I envied her. In the evening, I plucked up the courage, called Mandy, and invited her to a cafe. We sat there for several hours. I made myself swallow my pride and ask for her forgiveness. But Mandy covered my hand with hers. Sis, I'm sorry too. For Brian and for Caleb. I really didn't mean for any of it to happen. We made up and swore that we would try not to fight anymore, especially because of boys. I finally calmed down and even came to watch the team film videos sometimes. However, I did not star in them anymore. Things got better, but one day, Brian came to the water park. I wasn't expecting to see him and hoped he would leave soon. I even stayed in the pool longer than usual, but Brian waited for me anyway. Naomi, hi. My uncle asked me to talk to you. He's a professional diver and has recently opened his own school. He saw you in the pool and was very impressed by you. He wants to offer you free tuition at his school. I was shocked. Everyone had been talking about that cool school lately. Studying there opened up great opportunities but I had no idea that its owner was Brian's uncle. Passing up such a chance would have been stupid, and I agreed. After that, I had to combine work at the water park with diving, but I liked it. The coach praised me, and I was the best student in my group. One day, there was an exhibition performance in our school. I didn't invite anyone, but to my surprise, I saw my parents in the audience. They watched my performance, and then they came up to me and hugged me tightly. Naomi, we are so proud of you. I had been dreaming of hearing those words for so many years that I couldn't help but burst into tears. I'm fine now. I finally found myself and stopped envying my sister. Recently, Brian started hitting on me again. Hi, I'm Amy. I've always been the prettiest girl in college, and a lot of boys liked me. But one day, Julia came to study with us. She immediately infuriated me. Huge eyes, plump lips, long eyelashes. Long story short, she looked just like a doll. She also smiled really unpleasantly. I was sure that my classmates didn't like Julia either. But when I came up to them to discuss it during a break, the girls just looked at me like I was crazy. What? <laughs> She's so cool. She even gave me the phone number for her nail tech. She promised to do a Brazilian keratin treatment for me. And she also helped me with my test today. That's how I was quickly left with no allies. Meanwhile, the new girl annoyed me more and more. In the canteen, I saw her sitting at a table next to my boyfriend, Patrick. I grabbed a tray and I quickly joined them. She was talking about stars and telescopes and some other nonsense. And the worst thing was that Patrick was obviously interested in it. He hadn't even finished his favorite burger and was instead listening to that upstart with an open mouth. That day, I came home in such a horrible mood, but my mom looked at me very mm, suspiciously happy. Amy, look, do you like this dress? Do you want to wear it to the beauty contest? Oh, that's right, the beauty contest. Because of Julia, I had completely forgotten that I might become Miss College of the following day. But I'd been preparing for the event for so long. The dress was absolutely amazing. I spent the evening admiring it and imagining myself putting on the crown. And the next morning, I was standing on that stage in the dress and smiling. No one could compare to me. But then, the name of the last contestant was announced. I turned around and I almost cried out in surprise because it was Julia. Compared to her outfit, my dress looked almost plain. I hunched over and I started staring at the floor. But things didn't stop getting worse. During the creative round, I got so worried, I forgot Hamlet's speech and I ran from the stage while the audience booed me. Meanwhile, Julia's performance was absolutely perfect. She danced with so much energy that even the members of the jury jumped up from their seats and joined in. It was a complete failure for me. Julia got the crown, and all I got was a stupid consolation prize. After the award ceremony, every contestant's friends began to climb onto the stage and congratulate them. And I'd been expecting Patrick to come hug me or comfort me and tell me that I was still the most beautiful girl in the world to him. But <laughs> he didn't come up to me. My boyfriend gave a bouquet that he'd been holding to that Julia, and then he took a selfie with her right in front of my eyes. And then something terrible happened. She kissed my Patrick on the cheek and went backstage. I clenched my fists and I ran after her. I would show her what happened to someone who tried to steal my boyfriend. The dressing room door that Julia had slipped behind was still slightly open. I poked my head into the room and I saw something wild. My opponent 
pinched her own chin, pulled, and took off her skin. And then she took off her hair. I squeezed my eyes shut and I quickly shook my head. Was I dreaming? I had to have been dreaming, right? No, instead of the beautiful girl who had taken my crown, some pimply girl with plump cheeks, narrow eyes, and a potato nose had appeared. And on the dressing table next to her was a silicone mask, a wig, and false eyelashes. So that's what our beauty really looked like, huh? Oh, everyone would be shocked. I took out my phone and tried to film it, but it died right when I needed it. That didn't upset me much, though, because after all, now I knew Julia's secret, and I could expose her in front of everyone whenever I wanted. So I decided I would do just that the very next day. I brought all sorts of luxury cosmetics that I only used on holidays to college with me. And of course, girls immediately surrounded me and started asking me to let them use them. Only Julia pretended like nothing was going on, so I suggested that she join us. Your makeup during the contest was amazing. You should totally give us a masterclass. The girls loved the idea and started to beg her, and I was so delighted. Julia would never have a chance to refuse. She would have to wipe off all of her makeup, and then everyone would see her silicone mask. But things didn't go the way that I'd expected. Julia agreed to draw smoky eyes, except on my face and not hers. It's so much easier to put makeup on someone else. I'd also be able to explain what I'm doing at the same time. Julia began to do her magic with a brush. And I sat there expecting some sort of trick, but the makeup turned out to be really good. I was expecting some sort of compliments from the girls, but it wasn't me that they started praising. Oh my God, Julia, you're a miracle worker. She looks so much better than before. Amy, you should take lessons from her. Uh, now that really pissed me off. I jumped up and took my cosmetics away from my classmates. Let them use their own mass market brands while I apparently had such bad taste. My day was ruined. Julia had outsmarted me again in front of everybody. So I decided, okay, I'll step up my game. At home, I downloaded Julia's picture from Facebook and I edited it until the cute fake face began to look just like it had in the dressing room. I spent all night doing that, but I was happy. Now that liar wouldn't get away. I got to college before anyone else. I opened up her locker with a hairpin and I stole a flash drive from it. There was a presentation for an economics project that Julia was supposed to show us in a few hours on that drive. So in the computer room, I replaced the last slide that just had boring stuff on it with the edited photo. And then I returned the flash drive to its place and I began to look forward to Julia's humiliation. She, as always, performed perfectly. <laughs> I mean, even the teacher clapped. But when Julia's scary picture appeared behind her back, everyone fell over laughing. <laughs> and I laughed the loudest because it had worked. It really seemed it had. But then Julia waved her hands and asked for a moment of everybody's attention. I just wanted to cheer everyone up with this last slide. After yesterday's master class, a lot of girls were upset because they didn't know how to use makeup like I did. So don't worry, you're lucky that you're beautiful by nature. I had to teach myself for a long time on how to hide my ugliness. Everyone just took that as a joke and started praising Julia for her sense of humor. And she even said that she had spent the whole night editing that photo. What a blatant lie. I, I couldn't just leave it like that. Actually, I was the one who did that. Uh, well, to cheer everyone up. It was fun, wasn't it? But everyone stopped laughing and stared at me with contempt. What? What did I say? Everyone can laugh at themselves, but making fun of others? That's mean, Amy. My blood was boiling with anger. Oh, you are so blind. She has been deceiving you, pretending to be gorgeous. The truth is she couldn't be uglier, but I really shouldn't have said that. Julia put on <laughs> such a performance. She burst into tears, trying to look as pitiful as possible. I don't know why you hate me so much, Amy. Maybe you're just angry about the contest. Do you want me to give you the crown? You deserve it too. Everyone, including the teacher, hurried to comfort that liar. I became their public enemy number one. Everyone boycotted me. Even Patrick turned his back on me. He said he hadn't expected something like that from me and walked the inconsolable Julia home. And that's how life turned into a hell for me. Nobody sat next to me for the whole week. Everyone pretended that I just didn't exist. I cried a lot, felt sorry for myself, and I even abandoned the idea of exposing Julia. But one day, something happened that I simply could not let go of. That day, I walked into the classroom and saw her kissing Patrick. 
It was so painful and insulting to me. I ran up to the couple and I grabbed Julia by her hair and pulled off her wig. Well, maybe do you believe me now? It's fake. All of her is fake. Everyone froze with their mouths wide open, but the new girl even found a way out of that situation. The insomnia pills started to make my hair fall out, so I bought a temporary wig, but it turned out to be so convenient. No need to sweat over styling hair every morning. And honestly, it just looks cool. No wonder all the top bloggers, actresses, and models wear wigs. Our classmates began to sympathize with the poor girl, admire her courage once again, and I was kicked out of all the group chats. They also complained to the teacher about my allegedly bad behavior. And soon enough, the news reached my parents. When I came home, my mom said that I was gonna be punished a month without pocket money or internet. I hated Julia with my whole heart. She had taken away my crown? My boyfriend? My friends? And she made me look like some kind of awful mean girl in front of all the teachers and my own parents. I couldn't let her get away with that. And really, I didn't have anything to lose. So the next day, I waited for the gym class. When Julia started working on her abs, I sat on her feet, grabbed her cheek, and started pulling on her skin. But the mask didn't come off for some reason. Julia's cheek just turned red and tears sprang from her eyes and mascara smeared all over her face. She jumped up and screamed at me. Are you completely nuts? Why would you do that to me? I silently lowered my eyes to the floor. Everyone was looking at me. One of the girls handed Julia wet wipes and she began to wash off all the makeup that it smeared. I held my breath because now, now she would have to show her true face. But Julia remained pretty even without the makeup. My eyes started twitching. It, it just wasn't possible. I had seen everything with my own eyes. And at that moment, I lost control of myself from honestly the pure shock. No, I don't understand anything. You're ugly. Those, those pimples, the, the huge nose. Your cheeks! No! You are lying! You are lying again! Everything after that was kind of a blur. The frightened face of the teacher, the medical office, a note from the doctor, a mom, a taxi, getting home. It was really only once I was in bed that I began to come to my senses a little. Mom said that I'd had a nervous break or something, so the doctor had prescribed me bed rest and herbal teas. But that didn't really help me at first. I couldn't sleep or eat. Julia's two different faces were staring at me right in front of my eyes. The one from that day in the dressing room and then the one from the gym. And I just couldn't stop endlessly comparing them. I felt like I was going crazy. While I was lying at home though, no one came to see me, but my mom took a vacation and was there for me. After a few days, I began to feel a little better. Mom went back to work and I started killing time on the internet to distract myself from the strange thoughts that were rolling around in my head. But one day, I came across a picture of Julia. I enlarged it and I examined it very closely. Her face really didn't look like a mask at all. Apparently, it really had been just a mistake of some kind. I decided to look at the other photos to finally make sure of that though, and I opened her profile. But that's when I noticed it wasn't Julia Carter's page, it was Jess Carter's. Of course, I immediately thought, oh, this is a fake account. I had a bunch of them myself. But to my surprise, I saw Julia's comment on one of the posts. Awesome pic, sis. Huh, well, that's kind of weird. What I saw though, finally brought me back to life. I decided that if I just figured everything out, I wouldn't have to suffer anymore. Classes in college were just about to end. So I ran all the way there, hid behind a car, and when Julia appeared, I followed her. She stopped at a house, and then I saw something that made me doubt my sanity more than I had this last week. The door was opened by an another Julia, a knockoff version of Julia at that. I was so surprised that I didn't even have time to think of a plan. I just jumped out of the bushes and cornered the clones. What the hell is going on here? L have you been following me? That doesn't matter. Confess. Look, just relax. This is how I look without the masks, the fake eyelashes, all of that. I saw you peeping at me in the dressing room. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't tell anyone, but you started bothering me. And honestly, you weren't even clever about it. I predicted your every move. After you tore off my wig, I realized that you were at your limit and ready to do about anything to, I don't know, expose me. So I asked my sister Jess to go to college in my place for just a little bit. It was her you tried to rip the mask off in gym. I felt relieved. 
So there were two of them, and I wasn't crazy. But these two had tricked me like some little girl, and <laughs> that made me really angry. I didn't have anything I could say, though, so I just turned around and started stomping away. But Julia suddenly called after me. Hey, Amy, come with us. I made burgers. You definitely have never tried anything like it before. At first I refused, but the girls were so persistent that I had to agree in the end. And you know, I didn't regret it. The burgers were actually really delicious. And Julia and Jess turned out to be pretty normal girls. We chatted all evening and I came home smiling. Mom was just glad that I felt better and she let me go back to classes again. The next morning at college, I saw Julia again. She was wearing her mask and still no one noticed. Even Patrick. He was hugging Julia and whispering something in her ear. And I got angry again. But I quickly got a grip on myself and I waved very friendly to them. Girls finally started talking to me again. Julia had convinced them to end the stupid boycott. And everything went pretty much back to normal. But I still can't look at Julia and Patrick without anger.